Good morning, everybody. Uh, to those of you that I haven't met yet, first off, I'm, I'm Mark Thomas, I'm the Food Beverage Director here at Forest Highlands. So welcome today. Um, as I was driving in this morning, I was trying to think uh, how I wanted to kind of start this off with you all. Uh, I'm not a big joke teller, just so you know. You know I like jokes, but I'm just not great at telling them. But I think what I'm really good about is uh, telling stories, especially restaurant stories. Okay. So I was thinking about a really good story I could share with you this morning that uh, that would be a really funny one. So this one goes back a really long time from when I first started at Forest Highlands. And we used to have these members that would come in. They're actually still members. One of them has passed away. Anyway, their their names were the Buchanans. Okay. And they would come in, and my predecessor, his name was Chris Hilt. Uh, he was the F&B director here at the time, uh, kind of a mentor for me. And uh, these, this, they would come in, it would be them and their daughter that would come in, and they would just give them the hardest time every time they came in. Just nothing would be right. You know, you always have that one member or somebody that you just can't please. So they would come in and they just had his number. And they would come in and um, forgot the napkins on the table, or their food would come out and something would be undercooked or overcooked. But anyway, they had his number. So whenever we come in, it would be our pre-shift meeting, we'd say, oh, the big cannons are here tonight. We got, we got to make sure everything goes perfect, that something always goes wrong whenever they come in. So this night they come in, uh, and they had come in just, oh, God, it must have been the night before, and something had gone wrong. And Chris was like, this is going to be the night. We're going to have everything perfect. Nothing's going to go wrong. Now, Chris, uh, we're, we're similar but different. Chris was very, you know, when you picture a maitre d' in a restaurant, you probably would picture Chris Hill. His hair was perfect, dressed perfect. He had, you know, slacks, nice crease in him. Always wore a Nordstrom shirt and a, you know, tie. Really impeccably dressed. And he would go around the dining room, want to make sure everything's perfect. You know, if there's a speck on the floor, he'd go over and hokey and clean it up. Wanted everything to be perfect, so that's the way he wanted his nights to go. So the Buchanan's are coming in that night. He's trying to, he's like, okay, we, we got this. Everything's going to be great. So our special that night was an asabuco. And I don't know if anybody knows what asabuco is. It's a veal shank, you know, that's slow cooked and roasted, a big bone that goes on the plate. So uh, they're, we got the best server on them. They're sitting in the dining room. Everything's going great. And all of a sudden, you know, I get together with the executive chef at the time. And I say, we got to get Chris tonight. You know, you can tell he's really amped up. He's a little stressed. He wants everything to go perfect with the Buchanan's. What can we do to kind of, you know, maybe lighten this up a little bit? So we'd served them their food, they're out in the dining room. Chris was futzing around doing some stuff. So we, I bring a plate into the kitchen, and we got the asabuco in there. And I said, well, I grab a, we had a, we pulled aside a rock that we found. Not a pebble, good sized rock. Put it on the plate in the dining room, on, the, on the, this plate that we're running with the asabuco bones on it. And uh, I, I go out to the dining room, I call Chris in. I'm like, Chris, you're not going to believe this, what happened? He's like, oh, God, I don't know what to tell you. Buchanan's just sent this back. There's a rock on their plate. And he's like, he's like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. He's like, of all the tables, he's like, what do you mean there's a rock on the plate? And I'm like, I don't know. They sent it back. There's a rock on the plate. I don't know what to do. And, he, and he's like, I am not going out there. You're not. There's no way I'm going to talk to the Buchanan's. And now, you know, everybody, you know, some of the servers are coming in the kitchen. The line is there, trying to not to smile and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, you know, we, we all start laughing. We're saying, well, we're just joking, Chris. They came back. Actually, everything was great. The kids want to see you. They had a great night. <laughs> but anyway, we freaked them out. We were all trying to lighten up. Everybody's cracking up in the kitchen. And that was kind of our joke to kind of smooth everything over on that night. So. Chris and, that night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so at, at the end of the evening, yeah, we were yeah. really cracking up. But that's what I'm saying, not just a pebble, a rock. I, and I never saw Chris's eyes get so big. He's like, you've got to be kidding me. Not, not the Buchanan's, please. So anyway, uh, we try to have fun with some of that stuff. You know, try to do you know little practical jokes and stuff like that. But anyway, that was a night I could really remember because uh, the kitchen was really cracking up, and we ended up having a great night after that. Okay, all right. So with that, uh, want to start us off with a couple things I want to go over. Everybody has punched in with their new Paylocity app. Everybody got a chance to figure that out. Uh, the other thing before I do introductions, we're gonna we're gonna try to make this fun today. This is gonna be about a three-hour presentation. I hate to say. Uh, yeah, no, we're gonna break. <laughs> we're gonna break it up. We're gonna have plenty of breaks throughout. We're gonna have some quizzes in between. But I'll be honest, we'll be. Well, this will probably go to about one o'clock. Lots of snacks in the back of the room. We got some games planned for you. Uh, but we'll, we are gonna cover a lot of material today. So this is kind of your first day of training, right? Orientation. Um, after this, we'll do all of your training modules. Everybody should have a training packet with them. Uh, but we're gonna spend a lot of time to cover a lot of pre stuff today. All right. But, you know, how I'd like to kind of start off is by doing, oh, before I do that, does everybody have their, their phones with them and on the table? 
Uh, we, we do have a little quiz that you can kind of pull up. I just want to give it to you so that everybody's not searching for it. Anybody familiar with Cahoots? Yeah. All right, if you would go to cahoots.it. Cahoot. Sorry, I just got that on there. Sorry. Goose. Just make sure you have that on there so that way when we go to our quizzes, you'll be ready to go. Okay. Pretty good with that. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some introductions. What I'd like to start off with is introducing my leadership team, uh, who you all should some of you should be familiar with. They're gonna come up. I'm gonna tell you. Um, pay attention to what they say as they come up here and introduce themselves because this could be maybe in your quiz coming up. All right. So listen to them. I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go with water here. All right, you'll get the picture here. Uh, let me first start off with Haley Edwards. She'll come up. Let's see how to say hi, but she's a Candy Clubhouse fan. Hi, everybody. I'm Haley. This will be my seventh season here, believe it or not. Started out as a server, worked my way all the way up. Um, I am originally from Pasadena, California. Turning on a great season. responsible for all the food at the Canyon Clubhouse. And in the middle there, uh, Frederick, oh, both of those gentlemen have been, they were here last season, this will be their second season with us. Uh, that's Frederick Miller there, uh, chef de cuisine over at the Meadow, uh, responsible for all the food program over there. Uh, God, I can't remember, I have to ask for Fred's on nine or 10 seasons with us now, so we've been here quite a long time. And then, uh, Mark, obviously you met. I'm going to go to the back there. Someone that's new to us this year, who also just had the wedding here last night, that's Colin Backus. So Colin, you want to come up here? <laughs> I'm Colin Backus, as Mark said. I've been with the company since November. I am part of our really amazing catering team, um, and I look forward to working with each and every one of these. Oh, I'm from Bisbee, Arizona. Bisbee! <laughs> Catering and event manager. Okay. And then a little bit further down there, you'll see Aaron Hinkleman. Aaron. I am one of the Meadow management team. I've been in food and beverage my entire life. It is my first season here. I look forward to working with every one of you. And I'm from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um. <laughs> Just so you have some information on me, 
Uh, Mark Thomas, this is my 27th season at Forest Highlands. Okay. Okay. So I basically was you 27 years ago. So that story I told you was about 25 years ago when I first started here when I'm working as a server and worked my way up as a manager. I'm an NAU graduate. Um, got back in 94, so quite a long time ago. All right. Uh, so been here a really long time. I am a uh, New Yorker, right? I'm from Kingston, New York, a small town about two hours north of New York City. Uh, that's where I grew up and came out here to go to school and experience the great state of Arizona. All right. All right. So now we get into the, the kind of the meat of everything today. All right. So why why do people want to be a member at Forest Highlands? Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, the other thing that I've done, you know, just so you're aware, you know, we, we do a lot of education and stuff like that. I am a certified club manager, taking a lot of classes on that. So I used to teach the class over at NAU about club management. Uh, so I spent a lot of time, you know, learning about why people want to be members of clubs. And this is out of the, the book that we learned about contemporary club management. This is some of the descriptions of it. So a place where people with common bonds, backgrounds, professions, and interests can join together for a social recreational purposes that is not open to the public. That's a private, that's the definition of a private country club, right? And that's what Forest Highlands is, right? We are a private club. We are an HOA. There are a lot of different clubs out there. There are, well, you know, we, many of us belong to an athletic club. That's a club, right? You pay dues, you go, and you go to the athletic club. Um, we're just kind of a bigger version of that. The thing that makes us unique is we're an HOA. Uh, what do I mean by that? It's for a homeowners association to be a member of Forest Highlands, you have to purchase a home and that comes with a membership. Okay? Uh, and then you pay dues each month and that gives you the privilege of playing golf and coming into the, re uh, into the restaurants, playing tennis and using all the amenities. Okay? Um, so, but who are these people that, you know, that come to Forest Highlands? You know, if a country club like ours, we'll, we'll see what the dues are in a little bit. They are wealthy and successful people. Um, I often describe Forest Highlands as a resort club, and I say that because I, it, you know, most of our members are people from Phoenix or Las Vegas who come to spend their summers with us, okay, um, and do all that. It's like almost like a summer camp for adults, right? But they do, you know, they, they are, you know, they, they are, they are here for a social thing, right? Going out to dinner, playing golf, and being together, all right? So why do you remember Forest Highlands? I uh, mentioned the exclusivity. You'll, you'll, well, as we go along here, you'll see Forest Highlands is a special place. You know, it's been ranked as high as number one as far as golf courses in the state. Um, it is ranked, you know, in, in the top 100 as far as golf courses out of like 3,500 golf courses in the country. So very unique. There are currently um, no homes available at Forest Highlands, right? So everything is sold out, all right? That's, that's pretty unique and tells you, you know, how well we're doing. You know, there are clubs at times that are, you know, have waiting lists to join um, with us. It's to get in, is to buy a, a home. Um, and right now, the, uh, all the homes have appreciated and you can't even find a home. People are buying just lots of land that you can't even build a home on just to be here in hopes that there'll be a home available in the future. So exclusivity. Um, the convenience of tea times and reservations, right? Uh, we have these great golf courses. You can go play golf at a public golf course, right? Um, you know, the thing being is probably Forest Highlands golf course is a little bit nicer, right? In the way it's groomed and taken care of. Um, but it also, tea times, to be able to get tea times and get out there. A lot of times in public golf courses you can't get in and be able to play. So the ability to get a tea time at an exclusive uh, golf course. Reservations in the dining room, right? Uh, you know, I will say we probably, you know, if not the best restaurant, you know, in northern Arizona or the state. You know, great food, great service. Uh, that's why you're all here. So be able to come in and be able to get a reservation at a great restaurant is another amenity to being here. Right now, it's we've become so popular over the last couple of years. It's it's even hard for members to get a reservation. It's one of the problems we're trying to solve because we've been so busy. Uh, business and social connections, yeah, there are members that, you know, obviously there are business people, successful people, but there's a good way to make contacts with others. A lot of people join clubs. There are city clubs, that's another type of club that's out there that people join, uh, bankers and lawyers, and it's a way to make connections and be with people in similar business. So that's another reason you join clubs for the social connections. And then the other thing, you know, I mentioned athletic facilities, right? We have uh, a great fitness center here, Pilates classes, tennis courts, bocce ball courts, pickleball, so there's all kinds of recreational activities. You know, it's about doing stuff outside, you know, being able to go hiking and doing all those type of things. So there's all the sports and recreational facilities. We have their two pools, right? So all that you get to enjoy as being a member of Forest Highlands. 
uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we established it's right. We, we have two restaurants, three snack bars, we have catering and parties and big events. So the ability to have all that kind of, you know, be able to go out to all those restaurants is something special. And then now, you know, it's family tradition. It was kind of crazy that, you know, I've been here so long that now I have kids that I was giving cookies to 20 years ago are now members here, right? And so it becomes a family tradition where you join a club and, and it becomes like almost an intergenerational thing where they become members as well. We do have a junior membership that's available so that you can join Forest Highlands at a little cheaper dues to keep that family tradition going. You know, when we do our holiday barbecues and our big events, uh, you know, you'll see you know, grandkids and kids and grandparents all coming together. It's their tradition every year to, to be here at Forest Highlands and do those family events um, for the 4th of July and holidays. So that's why you want to be a member of Forest Highlands. Uh, the other thing is, you know, it's just, a, it's just a great place to be. You know, everybody really enjoys it and everybody wants to be here. I've talked to members that have told me they're like, you know, we, we, we visited Forest Highlands, you know, with friends and, you know, we finally got to a point in life where we could afford it and it's been our dream to be at Forest Highlands. It's just that special of a place. Okay. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about the history of Forest Highlands. So, you know, we're going to, we call this orientation. You know, the term that they talk about is onboarding, right? Learning about your job. So we're onboarding you so that you're familiar with Forest Highlands. But how do you, you know, I want you to learn a little bit about the place that you're going to work, what the culture is, our history, so you know enough about Forest Highlands and what we're about. So I already told you we're a master plan residential golf community. Uh, we were established in 1987, okay? uh, so well over 30 years old. The original uh, development was conceived by the Bailey Bartlett Group. Remember when I was telling you the Bailey Curve? That's the Bailey of Bailey's Curve. You'll learn about that on your tour in the next few days. And then Jim Bartlett, who was actually uh, still a member here, was in for dinner last night. Uh, he's one of our original developers. He has a cottage right out back here. Uh, so you'll see him, I mean, he sold the membership to, or he sold the club to the membership, and one of his, uh, when he left, is that he asked to be able to keep a membership for his, for a lifetime and to have a home in Forest Highlands. And he spends his summers with us, so it tells you. He's built golf clubs in uh, Arizona and California, but this is where Jim Bartlett spends his home, so it's obviously a very unique place that he likes to be at. Uh, the objective was to create one of the finest residential communities in the western United States, designed in harmony with its dramatic natural environment. So this, this piece of property was out there, there was a vision, they saw it, and they developed it into a golf course, and, and it became what we know as the Canyon Golf Course. All right, uh, Forest Highlands offers two championship golf courses, two clubhouses, two dining rooms, two lounges, two swimming pools, three snack bars, I'd say now that we're probably up to four snack bars, two golf practice facilities. In addition, there are four tennis courts, a fitness facility, hiking, biking trails, fishing ponds, basketball courts, volleyball, soccer, uh, rec center, parks, and an extensive kids program. So there are other clubs out there. One of the things that makes us unique is we have two, right? We have uh, uh, the, Met, the Canyon Clubhouse and the Meadow, two golf courses, and there was a reason for that we'll talk about. But anyway, there's other clubs. There's Pine Canyon in town. There's Flagstaff Ranch. But the thing that makes us unique is that we have two of everything. Okay. Uh, the Canyon Golf Course was designed by, in 1986 by Jay Marsh and Tom Weisskopf. Um, they were kind of uh, golf architects. Tom Weisskopf won the British Open, uh, kind of a famous golfer, played on the tour for a long time. Um, he's, you'll see him, whenever we do any remodeling, he'll come out and look at the golf course and make sure it fits his, the way he envisioned it. Tom Weisskopf built the uh, Meadow Golf Course on his own. Jay Marsh wasn't with him with that. But he saw the hilly, so it's known for hilly terrain and pine line fairways is what the Canyon Golf Course is known for. In 1996, the community was transferred from the developers to the Homeowners Owners Association. So Forest Highlands Houston, when you drove in today, you remember that three-way stop sign you came to and you turned, to, made a turn to come to the Canyon Colors? That used to be where Forest Highlands ended. That was the security office right there. And what was happening, you know, uh, I was working, you know, it was my first couple of years at Forest Highlands. And you couldn't get a tea time because the, at that point the club had become very successful. Most of the homes were being built, and on weekends you could you know try to call everybody, wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, and just keep hitting the redial button to try to get a tea time, and they couldn't uh, they couldn't get through and get one. So at that point the membership already started thinking about that we have to get a second golf course, and that's why we built the meadow. So that other piece of property became available, and we purchased it and built a second golf course there. Okay. All right. 
So there are over 1,100 acres on property. I, I took the managers on a tour the other day so that we could do tours with you, and I was showing them the furthest corner of Forest Highlands at the canyon and the furthest corner of the meadow, and it's amazing how big the piece of property is, but 1,100 total acres, all right? Uh, 650 homes at the canyon, 460 homes at the meadow. So there's, so you notice there's a lot more homes at the canyon. You'll see the lots are a little bit smaller, uh, a little closer together. There's more cottages over here, less over at the meadow, because we got smart because we didn't want to go and build the same amount of homes at the Meadow because we wouldn't solve the problem of all those tea times, right? You have the same amount of members to two golf courses, you're going to have the same issues trying to make tea times. So I had a little less homes, so we didn't want quite as many members so that people could be able to get tea times and enjoy the golf course. All right, so there are a total of 685 single-family lots and 140 uh, clusters. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke earlier. That's the, the 650 is the acres at each golf course of homes and 685 lots over here, all right, and, and there's a little less than 400 over at the meadow, so sorry I misspoke there. Uh, a single regular membership is assigned to each lot and passes to the new owner upon sale or transfer of a lot. So, as I said earlier, just remember you can't be a member of Forest Highlands without owning a home. There are a couple of special memberships out there uh, that we have, but mostly you have to have a home um, to be a member of Forest Highlands. Okay. What if I don't want to be a member, but I want a home? You want to? Uh, you don't. You, 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 the membership comes with a home. Huh? Every single house has a membership. Well, every single house has a membership. Yeah. The only, uh, if you'll, you'll see this on your tour, there is, believe it or not, there's a gated community within the gated community of Forest Highlands. There's a place called the Estates that you'll see on your tour. So there's a piece of property that came available. It's a landlocked piece of property. They don't come, you can buy a home there without a membership of Forest Highlands, but it's kind of a gated community within Forest Highlands. So you'll learn a little bit more of that. All right. Uh, in 1999, the Meadow Golf Course and Clubhouse was built to alleviate the stresses on the Canyon Golf Course, just like I told you, and to provide the membership with additional amenities. Initially, they were going to build it. They were just going to put a golf course in a, in a snack shack over there. Um, but we went into partnership with a realty company, then we decided to also add some other amenities. Okay. Uh, we are the only golf club in Arizona with two golf courses ranked in the top ten in Arizona by Golf Digest. That there is no other country, no other golf course in the country that has two in the top ten in the state. So something really unique. So the, the Canyon <coughs> has been ranked as high as number one. Lately, it's ran around number two, and the Meadow usually falls with within eight or nine as far as ranking. So something very special. Both golf courses complement each other or almost contrast each other. One has a big canyon through it and the one is more of an open meadow. So we have two very, very special golf courses. Okay. Um, the canyon golf course has been ranked in the top 100 golf courses in the country. I, th I think I said 3,500, I was way off. We have 6,000 total golf courses in the country. Uh, so we are really, really highly ranked as far as golf courses. Okay. Uh, something to keep in mind here, um, Again, when I first started here, it was like uh, one of my second or third year, um, we had the U.S. Junior Amateur Tournament. So the USGA, right, there's the PGA and the USGA. Uh, the USGA is the, is the amateur part of uh, golf associations. Um, so we hosted four of them here. Um, they're, they're very prestigious events. Um, to be able to say that you've hosted four is something really unique. Um, we had the Junior Amateur, we did the Mid Amateur, uh, and then we did the girls junior amateur, and the latest one was the women's amateur that we posted here. Um, those are, we basically have to close the golf course down to the members while those are going on. Those are multi-day events, they're a lot of work. I think it might have been Chad's first year at Forest Highlands when, the, when he came here, so we, we really broke him in in a hard way. Um, yeah, 4.30 a.m. being here, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> feeding, we were feeding him breakfast, we were putting on parties for 300, 400 people to feed everybody that was at them. So. Uh, those, they're a lot of work and really rewarding um, and something that really makes us special. But to say that we've hosted four USGA events. Okay, Kelly, did you get raised your hand for a question? No, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that USGA stuff is resume stuff. That's really cool to have on there. Uh, I, 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 I don't foresee us doing a USGA event for a long, long time. Uh, they are. They, they, uh, the, the only thing that's bad about them is they're, they're off-putting to members because we have to close the golf courses down and close the clubhouses down. 
and right, you pay all these dues to be a member here, and you only have the summer to use it, so in some ways it's an inconvenience to them. It is great because it is, adds prestige to the club, but there is the big inconvenience of putting everybody out and not being able to use the facility. So I think we, we did a whole bunch in a, uh, in a couple of years, maybe too close together, and I think we just need to take a little break for a little while. All right. <laughs> Uh, Forest Island Golf Club has over 840 me full members and a number of special members and all are responsible for monthly dues. Just quickly, a special member, when we first started, uh, Forest Highlands wasn't as successful as it was right now. Um, it's kind of a unique concept to have a mountain club that's only seasonal um, up here in Flagstaff. It was the first you know, uh, private club that was built up here. And so one of the things they did was you could buy a house and it came with two memberships. So when you sold your house, you got to keep this, the second membership, even if you didn't have a home. And then there's some members that still have it. You can't pass it on. So once at some point, you still have to pay dues and everything else, um, but it's not something that carries over. If you leave Forest Highlands or stop paying your dues or you pass away, that mem special membership disappears. But it was a way to incite uh, home ownership back then. So we still have a handful of those that we can sell. Uh, so new owner capital contribution fees. So. Uh, what does that mean to you all, right? What is, so we've, we've got two clubhouses, all this equipment, and we've done so many re renovations um, and built everything up and made Forest Highlands what it is. But those members that have been here for 25, 30 years, they've been paying their dues uh, for all those great amenities and for Forest Highlands to be what it is. So a new member comes in and pays the same. Um, it seems a little unfair, right, that everybody before them kind of made, paid all those dues to make everything great. So we have a capital contribution fee that, uh, that we put into a fund so that we can keep staying great. So you know, if we want to make the dining room nicer, we want to purchase stuff or a tractor breaks down or to do the roads to keep Forest Highlands looking great, if you become a member, you have to pay that $55,000. It goes into account that we use to keep everything looking great at Forest Highlands. I put it up there for you to know that you know, when a member comes in, automatically you're, you're not only are you buying a million dollar home, but you also have to fork over $55,000 um, just to become a, a member. So it is expensive to join here. Uh, and then next, the monthly assessment. So what, those are the dues. So $920 is what they pay dues, plus another $125. It's separated out because not only do we have the capital contribution fee, that $125 also goes into that same account with a capital contribution fee. Uh, to, again, it's to make sure that we are always keeping that funded so with chairs and furniture and things break down and new carpets, we always have money to do that. Okay? Um, probably more information than you need to know, but I just want to make sure you understand what those numbers are for. So why do we have that, why do we have that 125 on there? It's because Forest Hans is so successful, right? I just told you there's no homes. So if nobody knew was coming in, nobody's paying that $55,000 anymore, right? So now that account, we're pulling money out of that account, but we're not putting any money back in because there's no new members. So we added that $125 on there so that we can keep funding the account. Again, probably more information than you need to know, but there you go. So that's probably a lot. What's that? That's probably not raise. Uh, well, they're keeping it pretty well funded because we we're at full membership, so there's lots of people paying into it. Um, but you're right, they'll have to, they want to keep an eye on that so that doesn't ever drop below a certain amount. Usually they, and they don't earn much interest or anything on it. So. But that's very important that we have a lot of money in the bank to keep Forest Highlands looking great. The other last thing I put down there on the bottom is just so, you know, uh, what the, your dues does include is playing golf. So you get to play golf for free, it does include your cart fees. But if you brought a guest out to play golf, it would cost you $225 to play around round of golf at Forest Highlands. So when it comes to the days when we offer you employee golf, right, you're getting $225 to be able to play at one of the guest golf courses in the country, right? So when, if you haven't learned how to play golf, uh, you should really, uh, it's one of the nicest amenities that you have at Forest Highlands. Please don't ever leave Forest Highlands without seeing the golf course or playing it or just riding around. It is really, really special um, to do that. And, it's, and a lot of golf courses, or especially high-end clubs, don't allow employees to play golf. So you having the ability to play here is something really, really special. So take advantage of that. Um, I know the golf department offers lessons um, that you can do on the driving range. So just make sure that you take advantage of that. All right. So. Remember I said we're trying to learn about the culture of Forest Highlands and who we are. This is our mission statement, why we exist and what we, you know, are, are kind of our plan, what we're about. So, 
it's what we think about for our long-term planning. We kind of talked a little bit about it, but Forest Highlands is the finest golf community in the Southwest, right? We talked about all those rankings. It is our mission to maintain this tradition by meeting the challenge of change by anticipating and exceeding the expectations of our members. That one is probably the biggest one for you. That's service, right? That's it, right there. Um, what we do, anticipating what members need, and then not only knowing what they need, but going above and beyond for them, right? This is, we're going to talk more about it. That's, that's what a CTME is. That's, that's creating a truly memorable experience. So meeting the challenge of change by anticipating and exceeding the expectations of our members. It's our job on a daily basis. It's really what the hospitality department of the Food and Beverage Department is all about. Supporting the continued professional and personal growth of our employees, right? So one of the other things we do, you're going to find out, you know, we're, we're starting that right now by doing orientation, right? We do a, a month's worth of training. So until we open up, you're going to go through this training process. you got a nice training manual we put together for you. We're going to spend a lot of time with you, showing you how we do things, how things are like to work. So that is getting you personal and professional growth. But we do other things. We have continuing education programs. Um, both uh, Chad and Haley, you know, this uh, spring had gone to a leadership class, their first BMI classes. Um, I went to World Conference. You know, we, uh, we offer um, uh, wine certification classes. So doing everything we can to try to make sure that our leadership team and our employees are well trained in supporting their uh, education. All right. Uh, encouraging involvement and the support of our greater Flagstaff community. So we have a foundation um, here at Forest Highlands, a philanthropy group, right? So, you know, again, I can keep telling you this history stuff because I've been here so long. We added that to our mission statement you know, uh, after we first started. Because many people, the Flagstaff community, what they were thinking is all these rich people were coming up here, buying homes, living on this, this beautiful piece of property, and they weren't doing anything for the community around us. And members took that to heart, I'll be honest with you. They're, they're good people, and they do care. And they started a thing called the Forest Highlands Foundation, where they held monthly or annual events and fundraisers, and they would contribute, and they would go and use this money to help the Flagstaff community. After the United Way, the, uh, the foundation that we have um, is probably the biggest donator of uh, uh, funds to the Flagstaff community, millions of dollars that they put together for them. So they wanted to add that, so they wanted to make sure that the community you know that we're not just out here, they were doing something to support the, the area around us. So we added that. Okay. Uh, continuing our pursuit of excellence on behalf of our membership at Forest Highlands. So that excellence part, right, remember I just told you about that capital contribution fee and all that money? So that just means that we want to make sure that we're always being the best. We like to say that we're cutting edge, we're creating trends, we're doing things. We have the nicest facilities, we have funds to be able to do stuff. You know, just about anything you know, I've requested or, or desired, they'll do for us. You know, if we want to, we have a food truck that we bought, right? A hundred thousand dollar food truck we purchased because it was a nice amenity. We just want to keep things looking good. We want all of our kit, equipment in the kitchen, all state of the art, the newest stuff. So we want to make sure that we are always trying to be the best, okay? Uh, the golf course, you know, we, we do all, we do crazy things that we spend on the golf course as far as, you know, the fertilizer that we do, the watering that we do, all these things that we want to do because we want to make sure that the golf course is always the best. Okay, so f &B mission statement. So I told you about all that continuing get stuff that we do. Well, one year I went and went to one of these classes and we, one of the jobs that we had to do was to write mission statements or create mission statements. So I came back all enthusiastic and all pumped up. So I wanted to create a mission statement, not just for Forest Highlands, but for our department. So we all sat down and wrote up this mission statement, I think, that is more centered on what we do as a department and what I'd like us to be focused on. So this is what we thought. So Forest Highlands has the finest f &B operation in the Southwest, right? I want us to be the, you know, if you're gonna, thinking about going out to each of the members, I want them to choose Forest Highlands over anything else or any other options, right? And what are we passionate about? Providing personalized service and empowering our employees to build genuine relationships with our members. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, right? We're in, a, we're in the club business. What makes a club unique is that we have the same group of members coming in and we form relationships to them. You know, when we greet them, you know, we often hug them to say hello. Um, we have a personal relationship. So I think that part is really important. You're going to find that as you meet members, you're going to, you know, they're going to ask you who you are, where you're from, what you do, where you're going to school, and you're going to form relationships with them. And I think that's really important and what makes Forest Highlands unique. 
right? Then you're going to have people that are re request you. Oh, I want to sit with Billy. I want to sit with Julie because you form these res special relationships. And they look forward to seeing you. So that's something that's unique. Uh, supporting a culture of teamwork and continuous growth for our employees, right? Um, what I mean by that, we, I think of food and beverage as teams. We're collaborative teams, <coughs> right? We all work together to, to make our department successful. We have to really support each other. So I'd like to have a culture of teamwork, right, that we all know to help each other. And then continuous growth, we'll talk about all that training and stuff we do. We want to help you. We want employees to return. Uh, people are probably tired of hearing the difference between a first-year employee and a second-year employee is light years. You know, your first year here, you're like, you're nervous, you don't know what it's like, what it's going to be like, how it's going to be, you're learning everything. And then, you know, you get through a season, and then the second year you come back and, you know, you know what it's going to be like, and you have a whole different mindset, and you feel much more comfortable. So, uh, we want to make sure that you come back, and we want to give you an opportunity to, to go grow and develop. You might have started as a hostess, and you become a server, or essay, and you become a server, or you're a server, and you become a bartender. We want to make sure that you're always growing and develop, and give you those opportunities. Okay. Uh, sourcing local ingredients with a regional influence that are thoughtfully prepared by our culinary team. Uh, we are truly blessed that we have a very, very talented culinary team led by, which I, I put his picture in yesterday, he wasn't, he's on vacation right now, our uh, chef, um, Eddie Matney, who is uh, very talented, you're going to all get to meet him, big personality, um, members love him, and really, really knowledgeable about the food, we have an incredible food program. So, and, and supported by all those chefs that I showed you. So, we got a depth of talent in the kitchen, so you don't have to worry about that. You know, the food program's gonna blow you away. You're gonna eat great food this summer. You're gonna love it. Um, that's really great. And I put in the regional inputs. We do try to, you know, source as much stuff as we can, either from Arizona or locally. You know, the challenge in Flagstaff is, is that we're a mountain community. You know, and uh, you know, I try to grow tomatoes in my backyard. I don't think anybody's ever tried to do that. We have a tiny window of time to try to grow anything in, in Flagstaff, and it's really challenging. Uh, we have a garden club here. They face the same challenge. If you don't have a, uh, what do I say, a, a house to start something early, you won't be able to grow much. So it's hard to get a lot of produce and stuff here in Flagstaff. But what we can do, what we can get, we try to make sure that we bring in locally. All right. And then lastly, creating memorable events focused on bringing the Forest Highlands community together. Uh, right, the other, we're, we're really blessed here, we get to throw parties, right? Uh, it's kind of Colin and Karen's job, it's all of our jobs, but you know, throwing events, you know, we do have one event called the Taste of Forest Highlands, it's our premier event. If I get one more phone call from a member asking me what the date is of the Taste of Forest Highlands, we're going to go crazy, because everybody wants to know when it's going to be. Um, it's, it's June 11th, by the way. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's, it, it's a food and wine festival that we put on, and it is unbelievable. It blows them away. It's kind of our signature premiere event. But that's what we also do, you know, at Forest Islands, throwing great parties, and that's kind of what we're known for. Uh, you know, we have a 4th of July party that's going to be 1,100 people, uh, maybe 1,500 people, big, big events, and we've got to make those unique. So that's a part of our mission statement, to make sure that we always make those events very memorable. Okay? All right. We're going to do our first quiz. All right, anybody missing? Good. All right, here we go. All right, we have. Do I have to look at the screen the screen and your phone? This is really Oh, this is a scam.
table's not done now. Nice job. Billy. Hold it down for us. saw something special in you to choose you to be here. So you should feel blessed and gifted to, about that. At least they saw something in you, okay? So you're a part of our team now. We're gonna spend a lot of time with you to making you great because we already think that you are great, all right? Uh, so what do we expect from you though, all right? So now you, you've got hired, you're getting to be part of this great club and you know this great team, this great food and beverage department. So. I want to go through a whole bunch of rules here. We're going to talk about some stuff that policies and things we have to talk about and things. But you know, if we could put it down to one statement, all right, that you can just think about on a daily basis or whenever you're making a decision, right? As long as you conduct yourself as a lady and gentleman at all times and use your best judgment, you'll do have a great season, right? You won't be in any trouble. You'll be successful. Okay. So just think of that, right? That act, uh, ladies and gentlemen, acting as lady and gentlemen. Okay. All right. So. I put this slide together uh, a few years ago because I was trying to think about what made Forest Highlands unique and what we do here, right? It's a little bit different than a restaurant, right? The thing that I thought to compare it to is like when you have people come to your house, right? When you, somebody comes over to your house, you like to do something special for them when they're there. You clean up your house, you make sure it looks nice, maybe you have something that they like to drink, right? When you're cooking food, if you have a vegetarian coming over, that, those are the things you do to prepare your home for them coming in. And to me, that's hostmanship, right? That's taking care of your guests when they come there. So that's what we need to do when our members on a daily basis come to Forest Highlands, come to the Canyon or come to the Meadow. We're coming and we're hosting them in their other home. So that came up with these other these thoughts that we need to think about as they're coming into our home, right? The design, the, uh, the appearance and the ex exterior and interior of the building show that someone cares, right? Uh, you know, the valet, when they're out front, they go and sweep up, make sure there's no litter or trash, make sure the stairs are good, we have a clean rug out, so, and everything looks good, you know, we, we look at the clubhouse before they come in, the windows should be cleaned, there's no garbage laying around, as they arrive, the parking lot's cleaned up, we want to make sure that everything looks great. This time of year, you're going to start to see, we have the maintenance department working, they're, they're sanding down our old tables and refinishing them. <laughs> They're uh, touching up stuff, they're making, you know, repainting the clubhouse. Everything should look perfect so when our members come back that everything looks great. And then on a daily basis, we're making sure that the clubhouse looks great. We go look at the bathroom, make sure there's towels in there, everything's clean. Remember Chris Hilt I was telling you about, my predecessor, uh, he, was, he, was, he was the carpet sweep fanatic. You know, he'd just be going, I don't think it was the way that he got stress out of him, he'd go around and 
poking everything in the dining room so everything looked good before service started. So the design, the appearance, that leads into cleanliness. Everything from the hostess <coughs> the house to the floors are spotless. You know, we're going to spend some time talking about uniforms later, right? You want to go into a place, you want to make sure that it looks clean, particularly when you're eating food and dining there. We should all look professional and dress professional and we're not dirty, right? Our aprons are clean. Um, so everything should look spotless, particularly in what we do, right? Food's important, the stuff we're putting in our mouth and we're consuming, right? There's a reason health inspectors come by. So our appearance and the appearance of the building and the clubhouse says that we care, that we're concerned about that stuff. So making sure that everything is clean. Greeting someone, always notice that I am here, right? Uh, when you open the door and you get, you know, your guests come to your home, you hug them, hi, how are you, catching up with them? That's how we want them to feel when they're coming to Forest Hunts, right? You know, many times as they come up to the hostess and we form relationships to them, we greet them with hugs and kisses and show them a table, talk to them, ask how their kids are and stuff like that. So being noticed. And that's what really separates clubs from restaurants is that we have those relationships, getting to know them. And we'll talk a lot more about that, that being us recognizing a member. You know, one of the, that was the one thing I kind of left out when we talked about why people join clubs. Part of it is, is that being recognized, right? They want to come and we want, they want to be called by name, make, being called, feeling special, right? Uh, attention, everyone is always making certain I have everything I need. We're going to talk a lot about CTMEs and all that. So that's us making sure that before they come in, we know that Mr. Smith is coming in. We look at the... Uh, what they've had in the past, we go into our point of sale system, see what they like to drink, what they like to eat. Um, we look at our reservation system, see if they have any special dietary requests or tables they like to be at. So always making certain they have everything they need so that we're prepared. We know that, uh, that goes back to that story, right? Chris making sure that you know the Buchanan's were all set for the evening. They had the right server, they're at the right table, being prepared. Uh, so providing that extra personalized attention. All right, friendliness. Uh, every staff member has a smile, right? Uh, we're talking a little enthusiasm and being here, right? Nobody wants to go to a restaurant where everybody's kind of moping around. You can feel that negative energy. You want to go to a place where everybody's, you know, smiling and happy and wanting to be greeted with that. But it seems like there's good energy in that restaurant or that place. And we want it to be that way here. But, you know, when they come in, that no matter who they pass, any staff member, you know, that they say hello and greet them and welcome them to being here, okay? So friendliness. Listen. They heard and remembered my special request. I don't know, you, you ever have that where you feel like, uh, you know, you talk, you know somebody's talk, you're talking to them but they're not really hearing you, right? So that when our members are making requests to them, they want to make sure that we're listening to them and that we pay attention to what they want. All right, those little details. And then lastly, speed, right? Um, I don't know, everybody knows, we're, you're gonna see we're gonna do some service standards and there's something in the restaurant world that time is funny, right? One, one minute actually feels like five minutes to a member, right? Particularly that first drink, I don't know what that is for anybody. I mean, and I think we all feel that, right? You, you had a long day and you come in and you order a drink and then it takes forever to come to the table. Um, so speed does matter, right? Getting that to them quickly. Or if you can't, it's also just acknowledging them, right? There's nothing worse than sitting at a table and you're looking around, people are eating and drinking, people are talking over here, and meanwhile, nobody's come over to you, right? So just being that somebody, we're gonna be right with you, just know that you're there, so that little attention is really important. So, uh, speed, my food and drinks arrive promptly, right? And then, lastly, I just make sure that we know all those little things that I talked about, right? All these things affect the member before they've even eaten anything, right? They're here to have dinner, to have, have drinks and food, but all that other stuff, they're judging us before they walk in. It's like why we do all that training with the valets. But if they, as soon as they arrive, if, the, if they have a bad experience with the valet, they're waiting there, nobody's greeting them, right? They're already frustrated, you know, because they're, they're trying to park their car. So we want to make sure that the valet is attentive and taking care of them, right? Opening the doors for them, all that stuff. So, that, so they have a good experience, then, then they walk up the stairs and there's no hostess, so the hostess isn't swimming, running around and frantic, right? So now their second experience, the hostess hasn't, isn't being very friendly and nice, and that's before they even get to the table. So all those little steps leading up to it all lead to them showing what it's like. So you think they're not gonna be a little judgy of the server if they've had a bad experience with the valet, not a great experience with the hostess. Now the server comes over and they're like, and the, the server's like all happy and everything. And meanwhile, they've already had these two bad experiences. So. You gotta make sure that we've got all those little details before they even come and sit down. Okay? Hosting them in the home. What does it feel like to feel welcome? Sorry. It feels like home. Feels like home. All right. All right. So, uh, servant leadership. Okay? So, 
Robert Greenleaf is the person that came up with servant leadership. It's a management philosophy. I put it up here every year because it's kind of the way that I would like us to kind of lead you or be as managers. So the philosophy behind it is basically, you know, this is we're helping you. We're, we're here as, as the servant leading you to try to be the best, right? There's no more noble occupation in the world than to assist another human being to help someone succeed, right? So, you know, you're gonna find that our managers, you know, they'll help bus tables for you, they'll run drinks out for you, we'll do whatever we can. We're here to support you and help you with all that. You're gonna have problems at home, you're gonna to wanna to talk in the office to us. You know, we try to have that family environment, but we're here to be supportive to you, to help you be successful. Like I said, we chose you to be here. We saw something special in you. Now we're gonna guide you to get there, okay? All right, my favorite slide. Yeah, oh, you're so rushing. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna go through some quotes here. And uh, uh, this is somebody that's a restaurateur. It's very special to me, uh, that, that you know, kind of helped me in my career. It's somebody I think about, and when I think about the hospitality business, because he is Mr. Hospitality. All right, so I'm gonna read you some quotes here. Uh, you got a little sneak peek there, and you can tell me if you, anybody knows who it is. So, uh, hospitality is present when something happens for you, it is ab absent when something happens to you. Those two simple prepositions, for and to, express it all, right? Something happens for you, right? They come in, and what we mean by for you is, oh, we know that um, Mrs. Buchanan's coming in and she likes to drink Sonoma Couture. For you would be that we have some, oh, Mrs. Buchanan, I have your uh, Sonoma Couture ready for you. We bring it right to the table. We're doing something for her. Something to her would be like, oh, she comes in and her favorite thing in the world is to have a turkey sandwich and we don't have turkey. Uh, now something happened to her, right? So providing hospitality is doing something for them, right? It doesn't work out when, or they requested a special table and 51 isn't available. Something happened to them. So we're, we want to do four rather than two, okay? Hospitality is almost impossible to teach. It's about hiring the right people, right? They've already made that perfectly clear. I think hospitality is an innate skill. Um, we can teach you how to be good at it and learn stuff, know the food, know the steps of service and stuff like that. But if you don't find joy and pleasure in taking care of people, you're, not, you're probably in the wrong business, right? If you don't find that, you know, doing it that makes, you know, a lot of times giving is as good as getting, right? You know, you, uh, you, know, you do something nice for something that often makes, fills you up, makes you feel good, right? It's like giving a gift and things like that. So if you have that, if you find joy and pleasure in helping people, then you're in the right business. Lastly, uh, recognition is the number one reason guests cite for wanting to return, right? Uh, that doesn't have to, you know, happens a lot in the club business, right? Feeling special, right, when they come in, greeting them by name as soon as they walk in the door, hi, how are you, Mr. Smith, welcome, and all that, that makes you feel special, fills your heart up, they feel recognized, that is why they want to be there. In another, you know, this was an outside restaurant, how, those are your regulars that come in, doing something special, making them feel it, so. Recognition is the number one reason. You're gonna have a successful restaurant if you can make sure that people want to be there and feel recognized, okay? So, <laughs> does everybody know who anybody of those quotes are? Who, 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 anybody know who my favorite person is for hospitality? Anybody, hosp the, the HRM students? Setting the table? Danny Meyer? Does that Danny Meyer mean anything anybody? Uh, now, now we can show the picture. So that's Danny Meyer. The Shake Shack, everybody must have heard of Shake Shack. Right? And he's the guy who created the Shake Shack in New York City. Uh, national Wide franchise, started with Gramercy Tavern in Newton Square Station. Um, restaurants in New York City, I mean, you go into these restaurants, the service, the food, this is the guy that gets it. I mean, he teaches it, he lives it. Um, he knows what hospitality is about, okay? And then he also, now he does great burgers and shakes. Uh, Danny Meyer. The legend. The legend. Yes. Uh, all right, so we're gonna, remember, we talked about recognition, so here is, we'll talk a little bit more about that member recognition. Uh, member name recognition. What is, what is recognition? It means being seen literally and figuratively, being acknowledged, being welcomed, and being appreciated. Right? We're going to do, your managers and your leaders are going to spend a lot of time going over and training, to giving you tools or teaching you how you can learn members' names, right? Looking them up in the, in the system, in our point of sale system. Reservations, you're going to get to know them by that. Um, we're going to teach you to use their name. Using their name over and over and over again gets you to know them, all right? But it's really, really important, this name thing in the, in the club business and going out of your way to try to learn who they are. 
uh, a warm and sincere greeting, practice the 10-5 rule, right? Uh, using the members, so, right? Does everyone know, right, if they were 10 feet away saying hello, five feet using their name, right, as they get closer to you, making sure that you're greeting them. So you should, as soon as you get out of your car, when you arrive here, you should start thinking that mentality, so, right? But if you have a chance to have a dialogue with a member, try to have that dialogue with them as well, okay? Uh, Greeting them, fond farewell, all right? That, that's, the, that's your biggest one is before they leave to make sure that you say goodbye to them and use their name when you present them their ticket or when they're leaving. Or if you're the hostess on their way out, to try to use their name when they're, when they're leaving, saying goodbye to them, all right? We, what we try to teach is that you use their name three times is the important thing, all right? So when they, when they sit down at the table, one time during uh, all their in-service and then when they leave. If you try to do those three times, that's really key. So that might be important to remember, all right? Using your name three times during service. And yeah. if they have, um, like if they have doctor in front of their name, make sure you say doctor. Oh, that's really important. Is that very much it's important? Not, yeah. Right. Yes. That, 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 I, I wish in our system it helped. As soon as you learn that, and at your pre-shift meeting, you know that's when you share that stuff, that information. So when uh, we go over the reservations for the evening, often with you, if you found out that someone's a doctor, you know, share that with them. Hey, by the way, you have Doctor Stern tonight. You know, it's by the way, it's not Mr. Stern, it's Doctor Stern. Share that with them so that we can address them that way. You know, if you go through school for 10, 12 years to become a medical doctor, you know, they, they kind of earn the, the right to be called doctor. Um, and some of them are, I don't say sticklers about it, but you know, it, it's, a, you know, it's a respect thing to make sure they use their name, all right? So uh, ask that, or you know, or like you said, you can check with your managers. Sometimes that's hard to learn as you're going along. But no matter what, make sure you try to use their name, right? When they arrive at the table, you're gonna know, you're gonna be able to greet them by their name. Sometimes they're in service, you can say, you know, uh, Mr. Smith, you enjoying your hamburger, right? And then when they leave, Mr. Smith, thank you for coming in. So try to remember, you know, tie that three name thing into your service. So um, you're going to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, ballets, right? You guys have a chance to use their name, right? Okay. All right. So all right. Well, before we do that, anybody uh, recognize? There's a, these are somewhat newer members. I changed the slide. It's been the same slide for years. Anybody recognize who those are? Yes. Babies. 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 The babies. Good. Babies. Good. I think it should come up on the bottom there. Yeah. All right. Time for a break. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going to get your phones going. We're going to do a kahoot. I'm going to win this one. All right. We're so close. I know. Everybody ready? You need to do something like what Haley did, so. Thing too.
question. I swear to God. Put it back in. This is the right question. Please. Is it because we're about to start streaming? <laughs> Mine's not working. Don't tell us, and then something goes wrong afterwards, then, then you're in trouble. 
please just, just, just make sure you let us know. There's a little accident report. We can write it down. And, and the, the last thing to be aware of is if you tripped and fell, that maybe we, we have a rug that's loose or there's a reason that you tripped and fell, we also need to take corrective action to make sure that if something doesn't happen to one of your coworkers. So please, as incidental as, as it is, please make sure you report it. Uh, and now, if it's something that you, you, know, you need to get medical care, right? Uh, if you're not able to drive, the manager will send a coworker to drive you to the walk-in clinic to go there or I mean, go to the emergency room. Um, wherever you need to go, uh, just let us know. You know, maybe we, you, if you cut your finger, but it's really bleeding a lot, and you need to get some stitches. Just let us know. We'll get you out of here and get you to the, the doctor so you can take care of. It. Okay. Uh, so that's that leads back to who you call first. Just make sure that you're calling 911 and not anybody else. Uh, evacuation procedure. Now you all know. Just make sure you leave the back of the clubhouse so we don't lose you. Uh, the manager will take care of clearing the clubhouse. So those are the big things to know for emergencies. All right, uh, employee compensation. We're a little bit different than, than restaurants. I just want to make everybody aware of that, those of you that worked in restaurants and how it kind of works as far as your compensation. Uh, what we do here is it's actually, um, you know, right, regular restaurant, typically uh, a server is paid less in wages than minimum wage and they collect gratuity or tips, right? And that's how you're compensated. Um, it's a, little, a lot more of a tip business in regular restaurants, right? You're waiting for that at the end, or, or they leave it on your credit card and you get it in your paycheck at the end of the week. It's a lot more tipping going on. Really, we are kind of a no-tipping club, to be honest with you. It's supposed to be, you know, members don't care around cash and tipping and stuff like that. Um, we pay you a higher hourly wage, hopefully during the interview process that your manager went over to you what that rate is. But depending on what your job is, that'll be your rate of pay. You know, host the set one rate, server assistants and, and bartenders have different rates. We just pay you an hourly rate, which we figured out that kind of includes a service charge. All right. So depending on what you're doing, though, uh, members oftentimes, they are very generous, uh, particularly, you know, tipping was up. Um, substantially during COVID because people wanted really to, to reward service staff because it was a tough time in our industry. So people were very, very generous for tips and it seems to be ongoing. Um, I was reading an article in the Wall Street Journal the other day that was talking about 25% is the new 20% to thank you. So it's like, wow, 20% tip, it's a quarter of the whatever you paid. Um, but anyway, now the point is, is that you will get, uh, members will leave you a tip. That tip goes to you. Um, directly if that's what it was given. There are some different models depending on where you're uh, working and what area you're in. Your supervisor will kind of fill you in on, on the, the gratuity policy in your area um, as you go through the training process. I just want you to be aware that we're not on that typical model where we, you know, you pay less wage and you get tips uh, through cash. Uh, we pay you, a, hopefully, a good hourly wage that you're feeling probably compensated, okay? All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about CTMEs and personalized service. We hinted on that a little bit. Uh, so that, that acronym, CTME, is creating truly memorable experiences, all right? So that picture there is actually from the tea box of hole nine. Um, and what we did is we put a dinner on there down at that uh, area. Um, that's our chefs at the time. And uh, we had to, it was quite an ordeal, to be honest with you. We had to, you can't drive there. Uh, we had to bring everything down in carts, set up a little kitchen and, and that table that's down there and wine, and we cook dinner for them. It's just, a, it's, it's our signature hall, it's just a beautiful spot. But we created for those 10 members that they are a truly memorable experience that they'll never forget. Um, it's your job, and we'll talk to you a lot about it, is doing more of those CTMEs. Remember the other day that um, uh, it was Crown Royal Vanilla. Uh, he couldn't find any in the stores. Uh, I happened to have a bottle in the garage that we had that I wasn't going to sell, and he really wanted one, so I gave him the, uh, that bottle of uh, Crown Royal. It was something special that he really wanted. He said he couldn't find it. So just doing something special for a member. Now, I formed a relationship and I did something for him, right? And now we have something that I've done. You want to do more of those during the summer. Listening to them, we talked about being attentive and hearing them. So if you hear something that a member says, boy, I wish the club has this, I wish they would do this, let your manager know or share it with the team so maybe we can make that happen, that we can create a CTME for them, something really unique, memorable, right? Uh, you know, when, uh, during COVID, one of the other things, we didn't have any catering events, we weren't doing much catering, uh, just wasn't able to do that. We, so the catering department kind of was struggling, 
So we came up with these ideas of these Chef Eddie Unplugged ideas. And that would, Chef Eddie would come to your house, we would bring a mystery basket there, and he would cook and show you how he was able to create a meal out of this mystery basket. But doing that was really unique. He would go into that refrigerator and find crazy ingredients in their pantries and stuff and incorporate that into the mystery basket and make something unique. He was creating CTMEs every time he did one of those Chef Eddie and Plugs because they'll never forget it. It was something unique. Their friends would come over and they would all talk about it. So remember CTME, think about it. We, uh, we reward you if you do one. If you have a great CMT, the CTME, share it with the team, you know. Um, I've said this story a bunch of times, but I'm going to say it one last time because it's just, it's just a good example of the CTME that we had done for years. Uh, Mr. Greenbaum, um, God, I'm forgetting his first name. Anyway, Mr. Greenbaum was a member here. He's the one who opened up Pine Canyon, a developer. There was a, a young lady that worked in our stone house at that time. And Mr. Greenbaum was playing golf and came in and had requested tab soda. And I don't think anybody knows tab soda. It's the first diet soda. You don't see it very much on the shelves. It's very unique. It's not available very often. But he asked the girl that was working there. Her name was Lauren McNeely. And uh, she heard him make that request. And when she left for that day, she stopped at the grocery store and picked up a six pack of uh, tab soda. So Mr. Greenbaum the next day came in and went and she you know, he came in. She handed him a tab soda. And he was blown away that she remembered and did this for him. And then he came in and was like raving about Laura. She's unbelievable. She did this for me. And, and then after that, we made sure we had tap soda every day for, for Mr. Greenbaum. But she listened. Now, that's the point of the story, though, right? She did something, and she took the initiative to make it happen for him. We ended up paying her back for the tap soda. But she really it made a big, big difference in him. Mr. Greenbaum was a very demanding and successful member, and it really touched him. So, so think about those. All right. Oh, yes, sure. I am so sorry. What was your CTME? Yes, does anybody out there that's been here or returning would like to share a CTME that they did this past year or in previous years? Anybody have a good example of a CTME that they did? Tony over here does. Okay, Tony. So it was the 4th of July barbecue, okay. which we do out on the driving range. Uh -huh. It's awesome. It's cool. But it started pouring rain. And I was in charge of a bar, or at one of the bars, and the band the people were all under this one thing, trying to get all their equipment, and I brought them all here. And they were all happy. Nice. And it was great. Yeah. I don't know if anybody remembers the 4th of July. It was a deluge last year. Oh, uh, so all of our members came into the clubhouse. We had a thousand people all here. It was, it was quite the day. So. I think we've created a lot of <laughs> Does Anybody else have a good one that they wanted to share? Taylor, you got a CTV? No? Me? Yeah. I probably do, but like I would have to think about it. Okay. We can if you think of one as we're going along here, you know, let me know. Okay. Um um what's his name? Mr. Tommy Harris and his wife came in. Okay. And something happened where she was just, I think she got dizzy or she looked like she was going to faint. So I brought them both into the women's bathroom and we calmed her down and she needed her inhaler. That's what it was. And they like rushed and everything and I was helping them and it was, it was a truly memorable experience because she felt that I was there to help. And I Very nice. Excellent. Uh, Nick, did you have one? Please. I mean, we used to always, for Miss Baker, she only wanted to drink sangria, so we always make a special batch of sangria for her. Nice. Every weekend, she always comes. She remember that? One batch of sangria for her. Oh, that's excellent, yeah. Uh, I can tell you one. So I had a, so the, when I first worked here, there's, there's members that actually had left and come back, and it was the Campbells. Does anybody remember Jeff and Linda Campbell from last summer? And then, Come to the King of the Candy Lab. Anyway, I used to take care of them or wait on them years ago uh, when they were members here. And they would dine with their parents, the Berkowitzes. And uh, anyway, they rejoined. And Mrs. Berkowitz has passed away since then, but he came in and he really wanted to see me because he hadn't seen me probably in 25 years or whatever. But I went out of my way and he, they were sitting out on the, on the patio. And I went and talked to him and stuff. And, and just, you know, he wasn't a member any longer. Um, and just kind of shared what was going on and talked to him, made him feel special and stuff like that. And but I stopped. It was busy right here in the middle of summer. But I, I talked to him for you know a good 15, 20 minutes. 
But when I left there, then it's, uh, Linda, it's his daughter, who's, a, who's the member now, came to my office and just said how special it made him feel. I went out of my way and spent time with him and talked to him. And uh, you know, I was, you know, I rubbed his back, gave him talking to him and stuff. You know, older guys, probably like almost 90. But it was really touched her, and she was very thankful that I went out of my way to talk to him and stuff like that. So anyway, you don't sometimes you don't know when you're creating a CTME. I didn't think it was you know that big of a deal, but it really meant a lot to her that I spent that time with her dad. So, so think about that. Okay. I Let's talk about some of our incentives for you that we that we do. Right? Uh, since FH bucks is uh, what we do here, so we have a bunch of uh, fun money that we have that uh, we'll give you for doing certain special things. So you know maybe it's your day off, and we ask you to come in, or where you get uh, somebody calls in sick, and we ask you to come in early. Um, you know, or maybe just go and clean something, go above and beyond. We, we hand out these FH bucks for, for doing something special like that. And you can use that money, you can collect it up, you can buy stuff in the golf shop, uh, you know, a hat or shirt or something like that. Uh, you can use it if you, instead of an employee meal, you want to maybe get a hamburger or a special salad that we have on the lunch menu, you can use the money to, to buy food, okay? Um, but, uh, or if you want to you know, come in if it's, uh, the timing's right, you could use it in the dining room. So anyway, those are FH bucks, we call them and all the managers have them to thank you when you do something special. Uh, we do have an employee of the month uh, program that we do. We usually do two of those a month, um, but they're usually nominated by coworkers. Uh, we have a, the department heads will often decide who wins, but anybody can nominate an employee of the month. And I, I believe you, if, even as the person that does the nominating, you get a reward for it. You get like Parkins tickets. So if you spend the time to fill out for your coworker, <coughs> You know, I saw Susie do this or that or whatever, you fill it out and submit it. Not only will they have a chance of winning, um, but you'll also get a reward for filling out the nomination form. So those are good. Uh, and, and I'll be honest with you, the ones that, you know, that come from you, um, that you fill out, you know, I'd say 80 to 90% of the time that person's going to probably get it because it says something that you spent the time to fill it out. And then you get uh, $50 and a and a special little certificate and reward for doing it. So it's really a nice program that we have for employee of the month. So take advantage of that. I mentioned employee golf, right? Uh, the privileges, we, you can do that Monday through Thursday after three o'clock. Like I said, you are crazy. I'm almost willing to say that you're dumb if you don't take advantage <laughs> yeah. of playing golf here. Even you don't know, like yeah. just go. It is, it is so worth it to do it. It's such an advantage. Okay. Think about playing golf. All right, guys. Hold on here. Uh, merchandise. You can buy stuff. They have incredible stuff in the golf shop. If you want to, like I said, hats or gifts for your for your family or whatever, you get a nice discount for buying merchandise in there. Uh, employee meals. I'll be honest. Like, those are returning. I think we feed you really well. You're entitled to an employee meal every shift that you work. You work lunch and dinner. We usually sit down as a family and have those meals together. Um, it's a real nice advantage. The chefs go out of their way to make sure that we feed you well. Um, saves you a lot of money during the summer too. You don't have to, you know, don't have to buy lunch or dinner. Uh, so take advantage of the employee meal program we have. And then also we give you discounts if you, if for some reason you don't want to have the employee meal, you really feel like you want a steak or something special. Um, there's an employee fifty percent off on the uh, anything on, on the menu, so take advantage of that. And then lastly, that CTME nomination card, right? So if you come up with and uh, uh, we'll give you a reward or money. And so if again you do a CTME and you want it to be recognized, fill out the form, submit it, the manager will look at it, and you'll get a, a reward for um, some FH bucks or some money or something special for. Uh, doing a CTV, or if you see a coworker doing that, just like the employee of the month, just fill out that CTV nomination card, we'll share that. Okay, a little incentive program. All right, all right, before I go through this, uh, for a little Snickers bar snack, anybody tell me who that is? You gotta raise your hand, don't yell it out. Anybody know who that is on that <laughs> slide? All right, all right, tell me, I think you were first. <laughs> who is it? Oh, oh my God! Haley, I see the Bruce Lee. Yes. <laughs> 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 no, all right, everyone. So, 
he basically is the master of Kung Fu or karate, right? So that's why I put his picture up there. These are seven critical errors. Year, years ago, I came up with, I was trying to figure out what makes for like the perfect employee, right? What are the things that are important to me or that I recognize an employee? It was what I would use also when employees would return and I would sit down with them and say, this is what you might need to work on. So I came up with this list of seven things and I'll tell you why I think they're important, okay? Appearance, right? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uniform as we go along here, but I think dressing for success, right? They talk about that, looking professional, being having the right clothes on, you know, being clean. I told you is how important that is. But if you dress right, I think people respect you more. They know that you care. They care about your appearance, the way that you present yourself. Should remember, so appearance is really important to me, right? Looking good, and looking professional for your job, showing that you spent the morning caring when you're coming to work. So, uh, friendly, friendly people. That's kind of hospitality, right? Uh, making sure that you're enthusiastic. Nobody wants to go to a place where everybody's moping around. You know, we all have bad days. You almost have to kind of leave that at the door. But being enthusiastic about being here, you know, showing that you care. Uh, performance, that's basically how you do your hard Are you a hard worker? Are you staying busy? Are you staying focused, right? Are you doing stuff? Or are you just kind of playing on your phone or distracted or whatever? Are you performing your job at the best level, right? So that's your performance, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to call her out on this, but I, you know, uh, I think like Marley that works over at the Meadow. I, I never see her not doing something. She's always like putting stuff away, polishing silverware, doing something. She's always performing and doing her job at a high level. So thank you. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Job knowledge. That's basically you know knowing what you you know your job, knowing what we serve, what the food is. Uh, what the drinks are, what we carry by the glass, um, just your job knowledge. Knowing when, what, when things are open, our hours of operation, just the knowledge you have for your job. So, you know, making sure that you're aware of everything. Teamwork, right? I talked to you about, right, this isn't, uh, you know, at some restaurants, that well, other model, right, when you're working on tips, well, oftentimes, you know, it seems like service or waiting on tables, because that's more waiting, I'll be honest with you, than it is serving. Is, was, a, was an individual sport. You were all out for yourself. You wanted, you wanted to take as many tables as you could. You wanted to you know, get the best tippers and stuff like that. That's what you're about. Maybe it's the end of the month and you need to pay rent and you don't care about your team workers. You just want to take care of your tables and make tips. We, we don't want, that model doesn't work in what we're doing. You know, we want to work together as a team, right? Uh, we all have the same goal when they're coming in. The hostess, the valet, like I said, the server assistant, we're all working to make sure that that table's having the best experience. So working together, right, being collaborative. Or when you're idle and your friends are busy, it's helping out, what can I do for you? Can I get that, what do, you, do you need help with that? Doing that, so teamwork, really, really important element to being that you should master. CTMEs, we talked, just talked about that, but knowing what those are and executing it, all right? So if you can master what a CTME is, you'll have a great summer. And then participation and involvement, what do I mean by that? I would do our round tables before shift and stuff like that. And some staff, you know, you could tell that they just weren't engaged. Um, you know, there wasn't that glassy look. I want people that when we're at those meetings to, you know, uh, this one's coming in or answering questions or engaged or caring about what's going on, telling you, oh, they're coming in. Let me tell you about this member. Or, you know, they were in last night. If you're participating and involved in your job, that's something else to master. Because you're doing it on a daily basis, you know. Um, hopefully, Haley's not waiting on a whole bunch of tables, right? That's not her job. But you're, you are, and you're going to know a lot about what's going on. If you can share with us what's happening, that's participation and involvement, okay? So telling us how your job is or how we can improve. Okay. All right. What's the buzz? <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I put these up there because... You know, when you start, there's, there is stuff, you know, as much as being at Forest Highland as a community, you know, it's also very gossipy, right? Some of it's good stuff. <laughs> some of it is, you know, you're, you're surprised, you know, something changes or something's going on or something happens at an event. Boy, you know, word travels really, really fast at Forest Highlands. It's, it's that kind of a community. So I just put this up there so that you're kind of aware of what maybe people are talking about. And... I also put up so that you can share maybe some of the good stuff we're doing or what we're working on this summer. All right, so I put these up there, just some bullet points to think about. Uh, the Stonehouse remodel. So 
we just did a survey at the end of the last summer that the members filled out. And it was really about long-term planning, you know, what the, where the direction the club needs to go. But one of the things that came up in there is just the, the stone house, the layout, the configuration of it, you know, it just doesn't seem to work. So anyway, we remodeled it. We have some changes we did to it. We put some new flooring in. We removed some cabinets. Um, anyway, it has a new look to it. It's good. Hopefully it'll run a little bit smoother, but we did a remodel out of the stone house. Uh, <laughs> we heard you. Uh, the Chef Eddie and Club, I told you a little bit about that. We're, you know, I, you know, as we were, I write a season plan, you know, what we're going to do for the summer. And, uh, you know, I, I, I kept on thinking back about all the, you know, the, how everybody responded to the Chef Eddie and Club. It was something that everybody remembered when he would do those. We, we were in that member's good favor for a long, long time because they remembered it was special. So we, I can't have Eddie doing Chef Eddie and Clubs during the summer. We just have too much stuff going on. I can't say, oh, take Saturday night off and go to a member's home. I, he, has two, he has other responsibilities. But I wanted to find a way that maybe we could bring the Chef Eddie and Club into the club. So on uh, Thursdays and Sundays, we're going to set up a little chef table out on the patio here where you can have a, you can make a reservation and Eddie will cook a special meal for you out on that patio. It'll be quite expensive to do it, uh, but it is a special thing. So we're going to host some Chef Eddie Unplugged at the clubhouse to try to create those experiences here. Okay. Uh, pizza and Possibilities, uh, I put up there, you know, with, we're going to make a couple changes to that. It's a very, very popular event at Saturday nights at the uh, Meadow. You know, um, we found one of the things that we did in the winter season is that we actually, with slices of pizza, we actually heated them up in our fireplace over there. And you made a crispy, smoky slice of pizza. The crust was great. Um, and it was really unique. It was something different that we were doing uh, for pizza and possibilities. So we're going to probably put that into effect this summer as well. But something different to do with pizza and possibilities to add a little flair to it and make a great event a little bit better. Uh, Wednesday tastings at the Meadow. So Thirsty Thursdays, uh, we have wine and uh, vendors come in and sample wine with the members of a little social event that they can come to and taste wine and then purchase it. Um, it's a great night for us. But we didn't do anything like that at the Meadow. And so we're going to do those on Wednesday over there, tie it in with their international nights. So maybe they have sushi going on, we have some sake. Uh, for the international night. So different tastings that they'll be able to do over there. So another chance for members to come in, get something for free, and maybe purchase something. So we're going to have, what were you calling, Wet Wednesdays or something? What did you want to no. oh, I thought you came for the So anyway, Wednesday night tasting events over there. Uh, Smokey in the Pines. Uh, Smokey in the Pines is our, is our barbecue trailer. Uh, one of the things that we created during COVID, it was very, very popular, um, did really great its first year. Uh, members seem to like it. We have great barbecue food there. It's located at the sports park. We're going to uh, change the hours of operation on it. It's going to be open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday still, but we're going to also have it open for lunch. So if you're at the sports park or you're on the driving range, uh, we're going to have Smoking the Pines open during the day so you can go there and get lunch from Smoking the Pines. The food truck. Um, we're going to change that up as well. Uh, the food truck was, it's, we added that also after COVID. It was because we had all these pop-up events that we did during COVID that we set up on property. And that was the reason we purchased the food truck. The food truck last year suffered a little bit because it was brand new and the food truck actually had some mechanical issues. So the hours of operation were a little funny. We we're trying to figure out the best place to put it and what made sense for the food truck. So this year we're going to actually operate the food truck Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We changed the hours. It'll be open during the week. Um, the thought being, because we only have one restaurant open those days, now if you don't want to go to the restaurant, you could go to uh, the food truck and still get food from them during the week. So you have a second option, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, to be able to get food from us. The other thing that that does is it also allows us, we're going to sell the food truck for catering. So you can have the food truck come to your home and we'll go and cook food there. We, I think Karen's already sold it four or five times for rehearsal dinners that the food truck's going to be at. One of the, it could also go to the sports park or one of our outlets on property. You could have it go to the 18-hole putting course. And you could have the food truck come there and have food for your friends. Um, so you can, we're going to use the food truck more for catering this summer. So you can talk that up, food truck. Golf shotguns. <laughs> this is the one that's not a, a little bit harder to swallow. It's, it's, not a, it's still in the process of being passed, though. I just want to put that out there. 
we'll, we'll see. This is this is a kind of a contentious issue, uh, and, I, and it, whether or not it happens or not, it is going to be the talk of property, though, uh, for what's going on. So one of the things uh, to be aware of is, you know, I mentioned how we added the meadow when golf became really hard to do. We ran out of spots and people could get tee times. And right now, Forest Highlands is at full capacity. There's no lots left. Everybody, there's no homes to sell. So we are about as busy as we can be at Forest Highlands, which has created a problem with tee times again. So now it's not really getting a tea time, it's getting a tea time at the right time on the weekends. So if, you, if it's later, you know, it takes four and a half hours to play a round of golf. If you don't get an early tea time, a lot of times maybe you won't finish um, or it's not the time of day that you want. So uh, monsoon season, when that happens, you know, around one, two o'clock it'll rain and you won't be able to get a full round of golf in. And a lot of people come here on weekends is when they play golf. And what was happening is people weren't able to play golf. They were get a full round of golf in. So the solution was going to be, and members have been complaining about it, filling out surveys. You know, the only thing I don't like about Forest Highlands is like, you know, I can't get tee times on the weekends. So the solution was going to be to do a shotgun. And that means everybody goes off, uh, 100 golfers will come show up at the clubhouse at 8 o'clock and go out on the golf course. And, uh, and, and they all play different holes. That's a shotgun. So there'll be a, a foursome on hole one, a foursome on, on hole two, on three. So all the golfers are on the golf course at the same time, as opposed to starting at eight o'clock, eight ten, eight twenty, so that they four a foursome goes out one at a time. It's basically everybody plays at the same time, which would put more people on the golf course, and they would finish within a window of time at maybe you know twelve thirty or so, uh, and they would all be done with golf, and they all got a full round, and a hundred golfers got to play. All right, sounds great, right? Unless you're solves sure. the problem of, of, yeah, sure. of golf. Sure. Only thing is, is it is a nightmare for us, right? Because now we have 100 golfers here at 8 o'clock in the morning wanting to have breakfast or wanting to have, get something to drink or to eat or whatever. Or at now 12, 31 o'clock when they finish playing golf, all of a sudden there's 100 golfers that want a beer or want a sandwich, want to eat. Um, what do you do with all those people when they're finishing? Plus, there's another shotgun at 1 o'clock that goes back out. So not only do you have everybody showing up at the clubhouse at the end, but you have another 100 golfers that are at the clubhouse waiting to go out. So you can have 200 golfers standing around frustrated at food and beverage because they can't get a beer or something left. So we have some solutions for all that. They're not the best solutions, but we're working on it. But that is a buzz that's going on. It might end up being that I, the food truck, I, I put it out on the driving range and that would be offered. I also would have a bar out on the driving range so the golfers could go out there and have beers out there. Um, in the mornings, we would have a beverage cart going out. Um, they're all, <laughs> but they are solutions. So that is in the works. It, it, not everybody agrees with it uh, and wants it to work. To, you know, uh, obviously, I, I have selfless motivation because I want members to have a great experience in food and beverage. Um, you know, I, I think what we're doing is we're solving one problem and creating another one. But that's between us. Uh, but anyway, that, that's going to be the buzz going on. You'll know more about that once they've made a final decision on it. Just be aware of it. Okay? I have a question. Yes. Who makes the decision on that? It'll go to the well, it, It's a process, right? Uh, the golf committee will look at it. Um, so there are, there's a new committee. That's the other thing that kind of happened. The idea was thought about during the winter, but the golf committee hasn't been established. The golf committee will meet in April. They'll, they'll endorse it or not, and then it'll go to the board, and then the board will uh, either endorse it or not, and then we'll know. So basically the members. But they listen to our input. And we listen to your input. So they, Mark just said we have a, a, a bad situation here, a different situation that we're looking for a better solution for. We don't have the answer yet, but maybe you guys do. Maybe someone's got a great idea. You know, we want to we farm those ideas. We want to encourage them. It's a team work, guys. Who works at the meadow? Me. <laughs> you just have double tea times, no shotgun for you. So it's it's a, it's a canyon problem rather than a meadow problem. So just so you're aware. We're just know that we're really smart people and we'll find a way to make it work either way. All right, Hole One Cafe, uh, just going to mention with that, uh, that, again, that might open earlier if we have a shotgun. Hole One Cafe is, is basically was something we added again during COVID. It's a snack bar at the Canyon. The Meadow has a built-in snack bar. The snack bar that's at that clubhouse is in the clubhouse. 
So when you're playing golf, you can go before golf, after golf, during golf to that snack bar and get a hot dog, a sandwich, a cup of chili or whatever. At the canyon, because of the layout of the canyon, uh, there's a halfway house that's out on the golf course and you only get, you know, as you're playing golf, you'll go by it and you can get something to eat. Um, so a solution I came up with a few years ago was the whole one cafe. So at least before or after golf, there was an area you could go to that's a snack bar at the clubhouse. Um, the changes for it this year will be the hours might change. Uh, we're going to make breakfast a little bit more extensive out there. Uh, we're going to add raw, raw, your boat, which is a sushi station that'll be out there where you can get some sushi or sashimi out there. Um, that'll be there. And then we added a little cooler that's a general store where you can pick up bacon and bread and eggs and stuff like that. That'll also be at the whole cafe. So basically, we've been. So we've been... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying because members would call and ask us for so we're, we're, we're hopefully we're gonna we'll, we'll make that work this year and have that available at the whole one cafe. Uh, so some changes there. Double scoop ice cream. Uh, we started that last year. You know, sometimes we come up with all these ideas during the winter when they, they think they're great. You know, we, last year we started the food truck. Uh, the whole one cafe we, we did, so, and it was a kind of first year coming out of COVID, and we also wanted to do an ice cream shop. Our plate might have been a little full. We didn't give the ice cream shop the attention it deserved. Um, so we're going to change the hours this year to it, give it a little bit more attention, and it'll be open in the evening. The double scoop, it's, a, it's basically where the family rec center is, so you can go and get ice cream on Sundays, and it'll stay open to 8 o'clock every day. So if you finish dinner and you don't want to have dessert, maybe you want to take your kids over there, um, that's another place that you can go to. So double scoop ice cream open till 8 o'clock. Spread the word. Pickleball has nothing to do with us, but I want you to be aware of it because it is a hot, hot topic on property. Um, and you'll hear a lot of talk about it. Um, everybody familiar with pickleball? It's like tennis, but smaller, right? Um, very popular, it's the number one growing sport in the country, I don't know if you knew that. Um, but we don't have pickleball courts. Um, we put it on our tennis courts, which means tennis players and pickleball players don't like each other and they fight because it's not enough pickleball courts and it's a different type of sport. Uh, so we've been trying to find a home for pickleball, we're trying to find a place to put pickleball. But as with anything, nobody wants a pickleball court in their backyard. It's a little loud as far as a sport. Uh, so we've tried some different spots to put it, but we haven't been able to find the right location. So we're delayed in trying to find pickleball. So the pickleball players are, are been upset that we don't care about them. We don't love our pickleball players. We're not giving them a home. Uh, so they're upset. And then the tennis, ball play, tennis players, we don't love them because we're having pickleball take over some of their courts. So they don't feel loved. And so there's this little contentious group out there. There is a plan now for to put the pickleball courts at the security office uh, near there. The real estate office will be converted into new pickleball courts. Bless you. Thank you. It's in the process of getting approved, but there's a lot of work. You've got to get county approval. We've got to change the use of that area. So they're working on it. It's something that's in the process that's happening. If it happens, it won't, it won't be this summer. It'll be at the end of the summer. But there is a solution. There is a light at the end of the rainbow, or whatever they say. Yes, Chad, I'm sorry. What's that? And there will be some food and beverage there. There will be a little uh, snack bar type facility. That's the plan. I haven't seen the drawings yet, but there's talk of that to have something there as well. But anyway, I'm just making you aware there's still, if you hear a buzz about pickleball, that's what's going on. It shouldn't affect you. Okay. All right. We talked, I talked, you know, I mentioned attire, why it's important. So we're going to spend a few minutes talking about attire and how we should look. And we're going to have a little game about uniforms. Uh, so let's, let's start right at the beginning here. So, let me start off with those of you that are returning employees, um, you know, as the summer progresses or sometimes during the winter season, we might get a little relaxed on what the policy is. I will ask you that this is the policy and we get, you know, we start to go back to doing this because you have to help the new employees so that they adjust 
to following the right policy as far as what uniforms are. So I'm going to go through it. I'll answer any questions you have on it. But once we come to the end of it, this becomes the uniform. And I expect you to follow the policy and go with it, all right? Uh, we'll, we'll work with you on it. It, it, it. it should make sense. Haley's going to help you out. We'll explain it to you. We want everybody to feel comfortable. We know fashion is important. Uh, but sometimes we wear a uniform or we'll have to look someplace at our job that maybe we don't normally wear outside, OK? So I'm wearing that. All right. So black pants, right? Uh, no visible skin showing. This is, this is the hard one because boys just wear pants, slacks, right? It's pretty easy. Girls, there's a million different leggings and tights and pants that are high, low. Um, so we came up with a new policy to talk about pants. I'm going to let Haley tell you about that. But the big thing is that you can, well, we're going to allow you to wear pants that aren't to your shoes. We just ask that no skin is showing, that it's not visible. Haley, do you want to take it from there? Ankles basically what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a huge struggle to find black pants up here for us ladies. So as long as you just wear black crew socks to cover your ankles, because I know a lot of them will not go to your shoes or your ankles or whatever. Um, so just make sure you wear some black socks. That was, that was it. Right. No leggings and no jeans, right? Clear on that? Black belt. That was the other one. I used to say just a black belt. <coughs> and again, I'm a, st a dumb guy. And I don't know that some girl pants don't come with belt loops, so I didn't think about that. Right? So how do you wear a belt if you want belt loops? So this year, if you're if there are loops, yeah. Yeah. If, if your pants don't have loops, you don't have to wear a belt. If there are loops on your pants, I expect you to have a belt. Okay? That's a simple change. Black socks, like I said, just no, uh, no flesh showing. Um, all right, that's that's the big point. And and, and we ask that black socks, uh, again, being that there are, it has, it can't be an athletic sock. You got to have enough sock that you can't see skin. So please remember that as well. All right, uh, black aprons clean daily when in doubt, call to get out. So if we have a nice black apron that there's a lady that makes those for us in town. It's a very expensive apron, has our logo on it. I actually had her make it years ago. We've tried buying aprons. The apron pockets would rip. The straps would come off. They'd be filthy. So anyway, I ended up giving up on trying to buy aprons. So I have somebody make it. So it's a really nice apron. You'll get one of them. Uh, the only thing we expect, though, is the apron is there, right? Because you're working and it gets dirty. So do your best. You can purchase a second apron from us if you want. We'd be glad to do that. We provide you with one. The other thing, though, is, is if you get dirty before maybe you worked lunch, you got some stuff on your apron, a little coffee, just make sure it's clean before you start your dinner service and it should be washed, all right? Don't come in with dirty aprons, please. Uh, in rate for profit, you should have a server book, wine key, three pens, three pens, three pens. Three. Three. AKA, hey, hey, write down three pens. Three pens. Uh, mission statement and the liquor sheet. So mission statement, you're going to get a little card that has our mission statement on it. They're at the printer. I didn't pick them up yet, but you'll have a mission statement card. Keep that in your book. The liquor sheet is just a, basically it's a crib sheet, it's a cheater sheet, so you know what wines and beers you carry. You should have that in, in your server book as well. Server book. We all gave you pads of paper. Um, the server book that I've been buying for you guys for years, I, I don't know if it's a COVID thing, if it's on a ship in China or what, but I can't find the server books anymore. Uh, I, I have one coming in from a, I've been searching and searching the internet to try to find one. We got some samples in. I can't find a server book that I like. They're either too big or too small or what. Um, so I finally have one coming um, that I think is going to work for you guys that will fit in your apron and is nice. I'm just waiting to, to get it in and then you'll all get a server book for the summer and just make sure you have it. What's that? Yes. And then you'll, uh, there'll be a, we'll talk a little bit about, we could have a point of sale, a handheld point of sale system. We're going to, we're in beta testing uh, a handheld point of sale system tablets. Uh, Chad is going to be running a test on those, hopefully in April. Uh, facial hair and nail polish. All right, uh, facial nail, obviously you can have a beard. Uh, my request though, and, and I see some of it out there, you can't have a beard, Matt, you can't grow a beard, you have to have a beard. What I mean is you can't be unshaven, right? So if you have, you know, if you can grow a beard in two or three days, good for you. Um, but if you can't, uh, you can't come to work, all right? It, it's basically you are uh, shaven or a beard. It's not the, we don't do any Miami Vice look or anything like that. So just be aware of that. So facial hair. 
What's that? Uh, if you can make sure if you are up facial hair, like tidy facial hair as well, like when you are gonna have a beard, if you can upkeep it. Gro groomed. Uh, you, you, you have a beard. It has to be a groomed beard, right? If you have any questions about beards, I can talk to you. Right? <laughs> I'll let Haley fill you in. All I, all out. My request is, it has to be a neutral color. Uh, no bright yellows, no bright oranges, stuff like that. Uh, just colors that don't, uh, aren't overbearing, right? So neutral colors. Haley, is there anything I need to add about nail polish? Uh, maybe like I have long nails, so I totally get it, but not like crazy long nails that we all see, but like mine are pretty long. I would say maybe a little longer than that is good. If, it's, if have... it's slowing your job down, probably not going to work for us. Yeah. Mother and okay. kids standing outside the snack bar looking in the, uh, the, the glass of the glass door and she wouldn't go in, so I would go in went and asked her what's going on. And the, the snack bar attendant that was in there at the time had a tattoo on her arm. And she like she refused. I'm not going to go in there with this girl with this tattoo on her arm. I'm like, what the hell? It's, it seems it seems silly. It was like 15 years ago. It was a big deal to her. I'm like, okay. Anyway, the, the point being that times have changed. Or we go, you come to a cool down party here on Friday. There's, there's more members with tattoos than our staff with tattoos. So, but I can't change what the policy is in our handbook, right? And their handbook says you can't have any visible tattoos showing, all right? Uh, something the members have to change or whatever. But if you have a small enough tattoo, we, we read three inches. Anything else, if you, have a, if you have a big tattoo on your arm, just please wear a sleeve or a band-aid to cover it up. Uh, that's what I'll ask. It. If it's on your leg, you know, cover it with a sock. Just make sure that anything over three inches that you hide your tattoos, okay? Fair and reasonable about that. I get it. Do, any questions about that? I know that, that sometimes can be a big issue. Uh, also, nose rings. I know a lot of us have our nose pierced, so please just wear studs and not any hoops. Yeah, uh, I've been really good through jewel weeding rings. You'll, you'll maybe talk to your manager about that, but it's got to be subtle. You can't have a whole bunch of rings on your finger, bracelets, uh, no big hoop earrings. Um, it's all spelled out in your. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on that because that seems like a, a, a more of a fashion thing. But use your just judgment. Jewelry has to be subtle. Okay. It's all written in your handbook. All right. That's enough about that. We're going to. So I, I changed up the. Uh, this needs to be. So I told you, Herman, you're going to be like four feet tall. <laughs> all right. So let me point out a couple of things today. So Herman looks like I, I picked him because he looks great. But he, oh, his uniform always looks good. He's spot on as far as his uniform. I can count on him always looking super professional. So I want to take a picture of him. So all right, he's got his name tag on, right spot. His shirt is clean and pressed. He's got a server book in his apron pocket, especially made apron. Clean apron with pens and a wine key in it. He's got his black pants on and black shoes, just the way he should look. All right. Everyone needs to come towards Next slide. Mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, no. Right? So also, every time I see Maddie, she always, her, her hair is pulled back. She always looks perfect, her uniform, her shoes. So again, I want to take a picture of her. She has a great smile, too. Oh, so, uh, so we see Maddie has full <laughs> uniforms there, right? Everything, her shoes are perfect, her apron, uh, her pens, everything is exactly the way they should be. She looks great. Sorry. Oh, oh no. Maddie. Oh, <laughs> so, what do we see wrong here, right? So, so Maddie's there. She's got her hair down, right? First off, she's got a white belt on. Her shirt is untucked. And, and, and girls, it's it's tough. A lot of times, for some reason, the, the, the girl shirts, a lot of times, when you're reaching for stuff and doing stuff, it has a tendency to come untucked. Just please remember to tuck your shirt back in. And she has a whole bunch of uh, rings on her fingers, you can see there. She's a little too much jewelry. Uh, wrong colored socks on, and she's got black shoes as well. So and she did just about everything wrong. It's so, <laughs> so obvious, too, when you're wearing the wrong thing, because everyone else is, should be wearing the right thing. If you're wearing the wrong thing, you're, you're sticking out with a sore thumb. Her mom here, all right, in way, shirt way unbuttoned, got a pen in, in his pocket, right, filthy apron, again, wrong shoes on, wrong socks, and just about everything that could go wrong went wrong for her mom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to do a little contest here.
Or I'll ask for volunteers. I'm going to need eight years. yes, four people, two different teams. You okay, need so total eight. Yeah, eight, eight right? Uh, uh, I'll ask for volunteers to come up here. What we're going to do before I bring you up here, though, that table in the back. See that table in the back over by the kitchen, full of all that those uniforms. So there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, but there are also two completed uniforms in there, right? So there is black pants, black socks, dress shirt, all located in there in that pile. What you're going to do? We're going to see who do it faster. The two teams will compete. Whoever can pull, put the uniform together, and put them up at these two tables here, uh, on my left and my right, in the fastest amount of time will win a prize. A nickel. And we're like pushing each other. All right, so can I ask for some volunteers I'm to come famous. up here? All right. Yeah. Yeah. I got three here. Somebody else. Represent my dad. All right, volunteers. Otherwise, I'll have to cut. I'll make you volunteer. Let's go, Dad. I want four from that table back there. There should be a black apron, uh, a dress shirt, socks, um, a black belt. Is that everything? And, and black shoes. Yeah, so all that should be in that pile there. That, that should complete the So you're going to build it and bring it up. And whoever can get all those items out of that pile there and put them on. Put them on these tables here with dinner uniform. Uh, is it dinner uniform? Uh, dinner. 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 D
Right, a nice job, everybody. Thank you guys. Oh, yeah, of course. All right, I guess we, we did spend a lot of time on that uniform, several slides, a project. So obviously uniform and appearance means a lot. So really, really put some emphasis on that. Make sure you shop for the right pants and the right shoes this summer. All right. At the very end of today, we are going to give out one polo to everybody. So that's when you'll turn in your uniform contract. So for after today, from here on out, everyone can wear your uniform for all the rest of the trainings. Yeah, the, the, so after today, basically, these whenever you come for training, you should be in your uniform. Okay? And I know you might not have your shoes quite yet, uh, but try to get uniform. You should be in your shirt, though. No more casual attire from here on out for training process. Okay. All right. All right. With that, uh, we're going to have each one of the clubhouse managers talk about their area. So with that, Haley Edwards, please come up. <laughs> Um, so like he said, the canyon is the original clubhouse built in 87. Um, it is designed similar to that East Coast Country Club vibe, as you can see with the white columns and all that good stuff. I like to call it the headquarters on property since we have our admin office downstairs with our GM, along with all of the board meetings, committee meetings also go, go on over here, and we are currently sitting in our club room. So most of our catering events are out of here as well. Um, our dining room is more of the upscale dining room on property, focusing on fine dining cuisine and elegant wine service. Uh, we have lunch service seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and dinner service Thursday through Monday. Five. So starting off the week on Monday, like I said, we have lunch and dinner. Um, on Mondays, we have family grill night. So that is uh, the one casual-esque evening that we have over here. So we will have um, the grill set up on the driving range with various proteins made to order. So we can have all the families come join us and have a good night with us. Since the meadow is a little bit more kid friendly, we don't have too many kids here. Uh, Tuesday is kind of our dark day, so we have the two golf snack bars open. On Wednesday, we have both the snack bars open again and just lunch that day. Thursday, uh, for dinner, like Mark said, we do Thirsty Thursday, so we'll set up on our covered patio uh, wine vendors and have member wine tastings, and then members come in for dinner, they get to have a half-priced bottle of wine as well. Uh, Fridays is probably our craziest day of the week. Uh, one of my favorite things is the cool-downs. I haven't done a cool-down in a while, so I'm very excited to do them again. Um, it is a giant cocktail party on the driving range, so we'll set up a satellite bar out there, three different food stations, so when members come in, they purchase tickets, and they drop it in a little box at each food station, so that allows them to pay for food. Um, really, really fun event, and uh, hate to see all members a little drunk. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saturday is just a regular day, so you've got the snack bars open, lunch and regular dinner, and then... Sunday is also the same. That's pretty much it. Thank you, Kelly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the uh, Meadow and King. We put this hours of operation up. You know, uh, we, we last few years we've been trying to make them the same, uh, but members oftentimes forget. So if we don't know our hours of operation and what's open when, you know, how do we expect the members to? So whether you're working at the Canyon and Meadow, please make sure you know what hours were open. So if a member ever asks you, you can respond. So, right, Tuesday night, right, we know here's, there's nothing going on. Tuesday is the night that the Meadow's open. So please make sure you know what's happening, really. Uh, that's something else that's good to keep in your server book so that you know what's open when and when do we open it, all right? Again, that's probably the biggest question we get from members, you, you know, the marker was changing the hours, you know, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, I extended the hours this year to, because in September or Labor Day, we used to close some things up and the meadow would close down. I've extended the hours this year to try to make it less confusing for members. So the hours will stay the same all the way through uh, September and, and until the first week in October, and then they'll, we'll change them in that time of year because the weather kind of gets different. So I'm trying to create consistency in hours, but it's really important that you know what they are. Okay. All right, with that, if you go to the next slide, I'm going to introduce Chad Mason, who's going to come up and tell you about the meadow. All 
right, guys, this is definitely a change of since my first season. I actually got up here in front of everybody and I couldn't get more than a sentence out. You ever get, get that, that, that stage fright? Anyway, that was kind of bad. Uh, welcome to the Meadow, guys. Uh, this will be my fourth season at the Meadow. Uh, it is a changing beast, uh, evolving beast. We love it. Uh, it's got that cabiny feel. It's where we, as Haley said, where we invite the families to come over. So a lot of kids running around. Our demographic has gotten a lot younger over the last couple years after COVID, and uh, with all the new families coming in, it's it's really great. So this is definitely a center of uh, of fun for everybody. You know. Uh, the pool's open seven days a week over there. We've got the splash pad and the cabanas. Uh, kitchen and the pool are located right in our rec center. We've got our snack bar that Mark said is uh, attached to the clubhouse, which is really, really nice. Those people who worked at the, uh, at the Stone House, which is the Canyon snack bar, you'll understand that because they have to actually drive everything from, the, from this kitchen down the street. And we're attached over at the Meadow, so it's a lot more convenient. So. We do have it a little easier. We learned uh, when we built the, uh, the meadow. We, we made a few mistakes on this on this side, and we fixed them over there, so it's a little more. But obviously, we've got our own problems that are new every single season. Uh, but we prevail. Uh, we can fit our dining room. If you see on the bottom picture here, all those windows, uh, they all open up. So it's pretty much like an outdoor uh, pavilion. It's really fantastic, unless it's windy or it has got our smoking bacon thing out there. Anyhow, um, we do a lot of themes over there. We do a phenomenal menu, uh, which is our a la carte menu. Changes two to three times per season. Our chef over there, Chef Miller, uh, Fred is his first name. Absolutely fantastic. His focus is, or his, uh, I guess, passion is more Pacific Rim uh, food. So a lot of Asian influence, a lot of, uh, a lot of soil and sesame kind of stuff like that. Uh, really, really talented fellow. Culinary graduate, I believe, as well. Uh, but with, in addition to our regular menu, which we offer every single day, uh, except for Saturday, we also do theme nights. Tuesday night, we do a taco night. Uh, Wednesday night, international night. Thursday night, burger night, one of our most popular nights. Fridays are our seafood night. Right. Saturday, pizza and possibilities, and then we do our buffet on Sunday. Our uh, Sunday brunch, not a buffet. Excuse me. Um, but these are not typical cafeteria like back when you were back in school. Uh, these are actually cool, uh, cool themes. You know, taco night is just not uh, Ortega tacos and Ortega taco sauce, ground beef, etc., etc. Chef Fred gets into it. He does the research, so it's going to be authentic. You know, if we're featuring Brazil one night, it's going to be whatever they eat in Brazil. Um, if they're featuring Japan, you know, we're going to we're going to roll some sushi. We're going to get the the uh, guy from Arizona Sake Company here, the guy that makes sake. You know. So we're gonna teach you guys all about it. So you're gonna get a lot of knowledge, a lot of information from us. Try new things. My, one of my rules is you gotta try it once. If you try it once and you don't like it, at least you know you don't like it. Uh, snack bar, our snack shack's gonna be closing one hour earlier, I believe. Four o'clock <coughs> this year, which is the same. I thought we were closing earlier. I think we could, no, I think it's still there. Four o'clock. Well, we can because we keep the doors open now. Yeah. Ah. Got it. So yeah, we are uh, back to the same, same as last season. Our snack bar is going to be open seven days a week. Uh, Monday is the Meadow Dark Day, and that is just the Meadow Clubhouse. The pool is open seven days a week as well. So we have the pool open seven days a week and our snack bar. So two <coughs> areas to get food. Just down the street from us is the sports park. So we have our smoker trailer going on there. Uh, which will be trading spots with our food truck. Lunch is going to be something big for us. So between lunches and dinner, we have uh, two hours, three o'clock to five o'clock. We offer a small menu, kind of a, a golfer menu we refer to it as. Burgers, a couple salads, something really quick because the kitchen is in transition. Uh, Mark did say that our Pizza and Possibilities is our biggest night. We've done numbers up to 300 in that night. I think 305, 307, something like that is our max. We have about 126 seats inside the dining room, so that's at least one full turn of the dining room, but when you're juggling tables outside at the same time, you know, we don't want to say no. No, we really, we try to take it out of our vocabulary, so we're adding tables constantly. Well, is there a spot? Can you see? No, but the moon's out? I guess it'll be fine. <laughs> so we, we try to make them happy with whatever we can do. It's, it's going that extra mile, creating that truly memorable experience. Thank you. Um, the rec center. So yes, our Peaks Cafe, which is what um, 
what we're calling double scoop. So our Peaks Cafe was a coffee centric or coffee centered uh, theme. Coffee is still cool and still in, uh, but ice cream is also in, especially with all the little kids going around. We need like a button with the ice cream truck music or something. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, a double scoop. So. Uh, in my mind, when I think of double scoop, and what I envision, and what I'm shooting for, is um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the first, one of the first scenes where they're all in the candy shop. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Take a little sunshine. It's going to All right, but uh, ice cream is going to be available at double scoop until 8 o'clock tonight. So, uh, can you guys, you can say, hey, Stop in at Double Scoop on your way home, or if you're in the area, we're looking for ideas to expand it. Maybe something with takeout tubs. I don't know. We're looking for ideas from you guys too. So it's a work in progress uh, or process, but it takes everybody. It takes a village to do this, and we're looking for ideas. Uh, seven days a week. That should be exciting. So a lot of hours, a lot of, a lot of money to be made here, guys. Should be a fun season. Go back there. I'm sorry. So, so Chad, just to clarify, right? Uh, it is still a cafe in the morning, though. I can come in and get a cappuccino and a coffee in the morning and read the newspaper? Yeah, absolutely. We have, there's TVs, we have newspapers every single day, coffee service will be available, espresso service, you can get your macchiato, you can get your 19-word coffee sandwich or coffee drink. Yeah, everything's going to be available. Ice cream, you can still have ice cream at 6 o'clock in the morning, but you can also have it with espresso. So, so that, uh, and then it's also, that's where the pool food comes from as well. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that little building does coffee, lunch for the pool, and ice cream. That's probably turns into one of our biggest, uh, busiest establishments here, because it's always open. And uh, it's right next to our fitness center. The parents can come drop their kids off, grab a cup of coffee, go home and cry about it. <laughs> so but yeah, it's a very, very busy thoroughfare there. So a lot happening in that, and they broke $100,000 worth of sale for the first time last year. And they're open the same, same amount of time every single season, so $100,000 in one little pool area with kids and ice cream cones? That's a lot of product, so great job, guys. And you wear shorts and t-shirts, and, not t-shirts, but shorts and polos out there, so it's fun. Comfortable. So, so with that, just so we're, Chad's responsible for the, the Meadow Clubhouse, that pool snack bar, and he also has Smokey and the Pines uh, in that area as well. So with, with, with Hare and, and Nick, and that's a lot happening over at the Meadow. Uh, I'll, I'll run through these, uh, this other little area to tell you about that. I, I don't know where those yellow squares came from. I tried getting rid of them. Anyway, uh, ignore those. There comments on our parking stuff on Oh, is that where they came from? Okay. Pop-ups, uh, those are Memorial Day through Labor Day. These are things that started during COVID that we added um, to our um, facilities. So Cassidy's Cafe is, our, <coughs> is basically, our, it started as a bagel shop. We started making bagels on property um, here. It takes place at the Porta Cashier out front here at the Canyon uh, every uh, sorry, uh, Saturday and Sunday morning. So now it's more of a uh, bake shop. She has um, pastries bagels, danishes, all kinds of full full kind of pastry shop in the morning going there. Uh, we do mimosas and Bloody Marys and coffee in that area as well. Set it up every uh, Saturday and Sunday, become very popular. Cassidy's been, uh, you'll meet Cassidy in the kitchen. Um, she, uh, she was started as a dishwasher with us and now has become and has her own little cafe here at Forest Island. And I'm looking forward to the cars line up in the morning to come out there and get her great bagels and pastries. The hours. Um, it takes place at the sports park, um, uh, and, and the hours were the ones that changed from 11 to 7. So great barbecue food every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the sports park. And then the food truck I mentioned, there's a picture of our food truck there um, that we had repaired over the winter. It should be fully operational and running great this summer. And that will run 4 to 7. Again, at the, it'll be this year. The thing that you should all be aware of, we moved it around last year. It was at the... Uh, Sports park, or I'm sorry, it's at different locations. This year it's just at the sports park. So the food truck and the smoking the pines will always be at the sports park area. Okay? And then food truck as well, if, if at 
craziness happens as far as the shotgun. We'll be using the food truck over here on the driving range uh, every Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 2, to help us with that shotgun start. Okay? And then otherwise we'll sell it for catering as well. So, uh, Chad, I forgot to thank you. Great job on the meadow. Oh, thank you. All right. So that's pop ups. Yes, sir. Uh, All right. You did great too. I'm sorry. I thought I said that to you. I just didn't say goodbye. <laughs> So actually, one thing real quick that we're, uh, Haley and I used to work together for the last couple of years, and we had a really good thing going on, and there was there was a little bit of competition between the canyon and the meadow. Friendly competition, but it got a little, got weird sometimes. Um, but now that Haley's running the canyon and I'm running the meadow, uh, we are trying to, trying to have competition, friendly competition, but but not being deceitful and mean, or one team, one dream kind of thing. Yeah, one team, one dream. Thank you. Uh, friendly competition being that uh, well, uh, we did 150 covers on Friday night, we did 120, that type of stuff, right? So we're, we're all we're, we're all the same. We're all we, maybe we have different cultures or themes, but at the end of the day, one's nicer than the other. No ghettoness, none of that nonsense. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hey, thank you. It is the food and beverage department first and foremost. Okay, so let's just a couple of housekeeping things to go over before we wind this up. You all know that we have uh, coming up, all right, we have pizzas coming all over Friday. We're going to feed you some lunch, and then you're going to have a little meeting with the Human Resource Department uh, to go finish up your day, all right? So let, let's, let's talk about a couple of things. Employee meal procedures, all right, timing of employee meals, it kind of depends on what's going on. Usually for lunch, uh, you'll, that's, that's the one meal period that will send you on a break depending on when you're working. Um, it's usually down, located downstairs here or downstairs at the, uh, the meadow in the car barn area or the employee meal area. Um, your manager will release you to go get lunch. We usually don't have the chance to eat lunch as a team just because of how it's working because we can't be in the dining room when members are in there. Um, but you will get lunch. Dinner though, typically we eat dinner after we um, kind of gets set up and before we start our shift, it'll be usually between 4 and 4.30, we'll have an employee meal, we'll break bread together, and we'll have a little pre-service to talk about what's happening that evening for dinner. But no matter what, we'll make sure that we feed you um, each shift that you work. So if you work breakfast, lunch, or dinner, if you, for some reason we didn't feed you, let us know, we'll make sure that you always get an employee meal. Uh, locations I mentioned, uh, Dinner we'll be able to eat usually in the dining room because the dining room is not open at that time. Lunch you'll have to eat down in our employee meal area. Raising, so right, we do everything we can to feed you. There'll be times, or depending on what you're doing, uh, that you know might be a little bit harder to feed you. You let us know, we'll get you a sandwich, uh, whatever we need to do uh, to get you fed. But what we ask is that you don't graze. So once we've fed you and you've got a chance to eat, we don't eat while we're in service. All right, so we don't have a cup of soup going, we don't eat rolls, we don't, uh, somebody brought back a sandwich, no, no raising, right? When we're doing training and stuff like that, we'll feed you and you can try food, but otherwise when we're in service, we don't eat, okay? So eat before, remember that. Uh, smoking and bake breaks, um, that's the only time you can do that. We also don't do, we don't take breaks once we're in service. We open for dinner, we're, on, we're doing dinner. We don't go outside and take a bake break in the middle of service. All right, so just remember that. Same thing at lunch, unless your manager releases you, you're on the floor, that's when we're in service. So no breaks or smoke breaks at those times. All right, and then I mentioned the FH bucks, you can use those to buy employee meals. All right, the big thing I want you to know, we'll do everything we can to feed you. Um, sometimes I even, I believe it or not, I'll cater food in when we do our big barbecues, we're so busy. I'll buy subs from town. I, I want you to be full. I mean, it's torture, right, when working and doing the food business and being hungry, right? It's the worst thing in the world. So we want to make sure you have full bellies and we keep you fed, right? So just please remember, no grazing. The same thing with beverages. Uh, you can, you know, we, we ask that you don't drink the juice, but you can have as much iced tea and soda as you want. Um, please don't have a million cups laying around. You know, try to be good to the environment and keep your cups in a location that they're not going to spill or get on anything. Over here we have a cup area. The meadow, I think you keep them below the counter. Just make sure you don't have cups all around the kitchen as well. Special events, some things, some dates that you need to remember. You'll have this in your server book as well. 
Um, what I have up here is the tournaments, the ones that you really need to remember. These are multi, we have many tournaments, but these are the kind of the important, important ones, the five major tournaments that we offer. The first one is the couples tournament. It's a couples member guest. Uh, a husband and a wife can have uh, another couple join them for multi-day. We have dinners and lunches and breakfast for them. June is the first one for that couples tournament. The member member tournament, just that. It means a member plays with a number of mem another member. Um, they get to play on the, that one as a weekend event. It's a, we'll have several hundred members um, playing that. That one will take place at both golf courses. That one is at the end of June. The Ladies Swing Fest Tournament, all right? That, that's, in some ways, that's the most important tournament for food and beverage in many ways because the ladies really like to make sure that, they, that the food and the decorations and everything looks great. It's a multi-day ladies tournament. It's in July. It's 11 to the 14th. I don't know why we do it in July when monsoon rain happens. It's a tough thing for the ladies. They seem to always get rained out. Sometimes it's the start of monsoon season is the swing fest and all the rain comes. But, but anyway, very important tournament for us. It's the ladies member guest. We call it the swing fest. And then the end of the season is the men's highlighter, probably the most premier event. This is where we go out of our way to showcase how great Forest Highlands is. Um, um, great dinners, breakfasts, we, we pull out all the stops. Um, it's over $1,000 to play in the tournament, they have to be in it. And it's really what we're trying to showcase the event for our members. Okay, that's a really important tournament. That tournament, oh, I'm so sorry. This, we don't have the member pro anymore, I've got to change that. That is actually called the Ponderosa. The Ponderosa, thank you. Uh, the Highlander became so popular, it would sell out, there was a wait list for it, so we ended up offering a mini uh, Highlander, and it's called the Ponderosa, and it's at the end of October. Right, it's at the end of October. So that is to all the people that aren't able to play in the Highlander, we added that event for it. So all of these words mean nothing to most of you right now yet, uh, but those members, they, they really value these things, and, and right now, at least your management's thinking about them. Uh, once you get to two and three seasons, then these will make a lot more sense to you and when, why we're talking about them and why they're important. But they are important for our membership, so it's something that we feel like we should tell you. There are traditional tournaments. Every, every club has their tournaments. Like, uh, the Rifleman is the famous tournament over at Pine Canyon. So, but all clubs have a ladies' member guest and a men's member guest. These are the terms for them. So, but they are very important dates. We probably won't give you off during those times. Um, we, it's when we kind of, we really, those weeks are really tough and long hours and stuff like that. So do try to remember those. We'll remind you when they're coming up uh, to prepare for those. The other ones are the holiday barbecues. Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day are our big holiday barbecues. Uh, Memorial Day is kind of how we kick off the summer. Anywhere from 600 to 1,000 people, depending on what the weather's like for Memorial Day. Uh, we hold our Memorial Day parties on a Sunday because uh, the next day is a holiday. Uh, so Memorial Day will be that Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. It's out on the driving range over here. We all work it. It's the one time that the food and beverage team comes back together. The Meadow team comes over here and works it uh, because we have a thousand people coming to it. So those big celebrations, live music, kids activities, uh, it's four to seven. So those are really big events. Fourth of July is traditionally the biggest one if we don't have rain. Um, because it's in the middle of the summer. We'll do anywhere from 1,100 to 1,500 people for the 4th of July. So that's the big one. And that one actually takes place either on the 4th of July or right near it. You know, the 4th of July doesn't fall on a weekend. It's not like Memorial Day and Labor Day. So it depends on what date the is. But we usually tie it right close to the 4th of July. And then Labor Day is kind of the end to the summer one. That's kind of the, when kids start going back to school or are back in school. Uh, so a lot of the families start leaving after Labor Day, and that's the one at the end of the summer. We can sometimes spend the busiest one. Um, again, anywhere from 1,000 to 1,300 people for Labor Day. All right, so those are really big. A couple other ones to remember. We, Father's Day, I, I don't know when fathers became more important than moms, but for some reason Father's Day is like one of the busiest holidays we have. Um, and it's the time of the year, it's in June. Uh, but we do a holiday brunch at the Meadow uh, for Father's Day, and then we also have a barbecue that evening in music. So that's a big event for us in June. The Taste of Forest Highlands, that's the Food and Wine Festival that I mentioned. It's our premier event, right, that we do. That's when we showcase Forest Highlands. It is, this year it'll be, we did 450 people last year. Um, this year we're going to push it to 500. We sell $250,000 worth of wine, 500 cases of wine in one night. 
Uh, it's a really, really big event for us. It's a bougie event. The leather couch is out and everything. It's, 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 it's very, very special. It's, it's, it's all the out on the driving range. It's kind of our signature event um, where we showcase our talents and our skills and members purchase wine at it. We just renovated our garage to squeeze all those 500 cases of wine. But remember that date, June 11th, Taste of Forest Highlands. Uh, dueling pianos, they'll take place in August. We used to do a comedy night. For some reason, it's hard find making sure that your comedian is, is, is good. We had a really bad comedian last year. So I'm going to do dueling pianos. And we're gonna have, and we're gonna do it twice in the month of August this year. Very popular. It's uh, two piano players. They take requests from the uh, from the audience. You can pay them to or bribe them to play a different song. They're really fun. They actually, I, I, they're gonna play some of the other clubs up in Northern Arizona. At that time, they were so popular, but really, really fun. We'll do those in August um, with the members. Really cool. And then we do a fall festival in October. Um, it's over. Columbus Day weekend, and we have a, uh, we'll do that at the sports park. It's another really fun event that's become more and more popular. Families will play special events for that. So anyway, just some, some important dates to know. Keep them in your book. Members will ask you, when is this, when is that? So Karen and I do marketing for all of that could be, so if you really have any questions, we're, we are pretty well versed on what's happening at both clubhouses as well. All right. Uh, phone policy. So this is tough, right? We all know, right, phones are probably the most important thing in our lives, right? We're on it 24 hours a day practically, right? It's not just a phone anymore. It's basically how we run our lives. We have reminders and emails and apps and everything on it. I get it, right? All the social media stuff. Phones are very important in our lives. But, you know, we do have to have some constraints on when we can use the phones and what we can do with phones, right? Uh, I have no trouble when we're not in service. You can use your phone for whatever you need to do. You know, send a text message, check with your friends. When you're on your lunch break or having your employee meals or whatever, um, use your phone as much as you need to. I get it, all right? But what we do have to not do is we don't use our phone when we're in service, right? So once we're open, it's lunch or it's dinner time, let's just say phone needs to be in your apron or in a locker or away. We don't pull it out or checking on it or getting messages while we're in service, okay? Phone, that point, can't be used, except for one exception, and I'll tell you about in a sec. But otherwise, your phones, you, you don't want to ruin this, all right? Don't, don't take advantage of your man managers. Don't get them angry at you, because what they did well do, if they see you on your phone too much, they'll confiscate your phone and put it in the office until you finish your shift. Don't, don't make don't. me that guy. Please, don't make me that guy. <laughs> so, like, last season, my thing with members was always, like, talking about our dogs. And I would always pull out my phone and show pictures of my dogs and vice versa. Would that be allowed? Well, we're going to talk about a couple little exceptions okay. about the, what, 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 what we did find over here at the canyon. The specials that we would have in the evening would be, you know, you know an elaborate creation and look beautiful. We found that taking a picture of that special and sharing it with a, with a member at the table and, and doing that would be fine. Um, it would help them sell it if that's what you're using. This is what the special looks like. I can see that and sharing that with them. That would be an exception to the rule, right? But what we can't be doing is when we're, you know, looking to our friends or talking to them and stuff like that. Pictures becomes an issue. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll tell you one of the things you got to be aware of. I get it. Some, we're, we're putting on incredible events, right? And you know, the stuff you've never seen before, right? When we got the taste of Forest Hounds, you want to take a picture and share that. You got to be really careful with your phone because of the times we live in. What you could you could take a picture and then post it on Facebook or on something, and there could be people that maybe don't want to be in that picture that are in the background. Or shouldn't tell the story. <laughs> right. So, well, yeah, I don't mind telling you. So, what happened was, is we, you know, we somebody took a picture, posted it of uh, somebody. It was a, a a husband, not with his wife, but with somebody else. <laughs> right. That got posted and was this and, and, and was seen. Right. You know, there are, there, are, there, are, there are other things that have happened that you don't know who's in your background. Right? And I can see this happening. I can see this happening and it's going to be like, I'll be like, I, you're on your phone too much or, or you're really causing, you shouldn't be on your phone as much as you are. But I was just showing them whatever, whatever. It's the perception. I, I know what you were doing and you were probably doing something within the guidelines and the rules, but it's the perception of that, so if if we say something, it's probably it's probably being perceived as you're not working or doing something else. Yes, 
I feel like you have fun enough to where you're not on your phone. It just kind of, you don't really look at it. Yeah. I mean, at least for me. So we've all been in the restaurant and you've seen servers in the, in the server station all together and on their phones. We've all seen it. And we've all thought to ourselves, we're, I'm better than that, or my team's better than that. Let's not be those people that say, look at Forest Highlands all on their cell phone. So don't let us take, don't make us take it away. Uh, again, it goes back to, to telling your point, using your best judgment, right? Yeah. What, what we can't do is in the middle, you know, think about when you're going to do it. There is a, there is a time and a place to do it, right? So yeah. it's a tool, I get it. Right, but just don't be on your phone when we're in the middle of the service, you know, looking for that. If you're expecting a special call, let the manager know. I don't mind if, they, if your family or friend needs to call the clubhouse. You got something going on? Just, just not on your phone while we're in service. Okay, is that pretty clear? Okay. All right. Uh oh, the other thing is yes, being visible too. I know this is this again goes back with I'm a stupid guy and I know girls and their pants are different, but you can't have your phone hanging out of your back pocket. I know. Uh, girls and pants is different. It can be in your apron and stuff like that. Uh, if you need to put it in your locker or put it in the office, you're fine. But you can't also, it just doesn't look good, particularly some of the, some of the phones now are like this big. You can't have a giant <laughs> phone hanging out of your back pocket. It has to not be visible as well. All right, so figure out, make a plan on how you're going to handle that if you've got a giant phone. Uh, but again, it can't be in your back pocket hanging out. It's either your apron or you find a shelf or a place to put it, uh, but just uh, not doing that. Okay, does that seem reasonable? Yes. Um, ahead, also, yes. Mark will call all the managers 20 times a day on their cell phone, so managers will be using their cell phones during service. I just want to put that out there because I know that's, you guys are going to be like, well, why can't we use ours if you are using yours? I have members calling me, Mark calling me. I also get all the clubhouse calls on my cell phone. So I just want to put that out there. We're not trying to not be fair. It's just we physically have to use our phones. We don't. We don't do the radio thing yet, or during big holidays, we don't have walkie-talkies or radios in our ears. So right now, we're using phones to communicate. So yes, to Haley's point, there will be times that it's it's a working device for us that we're using. So please forgive us. Scheduling. All right. Um, so just want to go through this because I know that's a really important thing um, for the summer. And policy. We are we're in the process. We're not 100% there. Using Paylocity this summer to do your schedule. It is new Paylocity we use for clocking in now. It's our payroll system, and it also will be what we use for scheduling. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. Unless it doesn't. There's some things that it's not doing that we want it to do yet. But as of right now, Paylocity will be what we use for schedules. Um, irregardless of what the what program we're using. We do have a couple of policies I'd like you to be aware of as far as relating to schedules. Uh, time off requests, right? The, the operative word there being requests. You know, we like to, you know, we, we get it. We all want you to have a good work-life balance um, and have time off. Most of you, or a lot of you are students, right? It's summertime, we want to do and have fun things, but we can't meet everybody's needs. I showed you all the stuff that's happening during the summer. You know, we have certain weekends and holidays blocked off. So we ask you to make your request. If you have a request, my suggestion, or a family vacation, make it as soon as possible so we can get it in there and get it, uh, you know, get it blocked off before other staff members. You know, it's hard for us to gauge what is, you know, uh, what's the right request. You might have a wedding. Somebody else might be going with their friends to someplace. We can't judge which is more important. If it's important to you, make the request as soon as possible so that we can say yes to you. But it does need to be day two weeks in advance is the other thing. And why I say two weeks in advance is because we try to, or we should, as good managers, give you two weeks of schedules so that you can know and make plans to do fun things, right? So you'll know when your day's off or when you're available so you can make plans to go camping or do stuff. So we should have two weeks of schedules uh, to you at all times. Once that schedule is posted, though, we're done. We're walking away. We've posted it. Now it's in your hands. If you need to have a day off, or request something, you can do a switch or a swap, but it has to be made, you, know, you have your, it's your responsibility to get your shift covered. The manager will approve it and make sure that it's good. You, obviously you can't, if you're a Canyon dinner server, you can't switch with a meadow server or a person that works at the stone house. It has to be comparable jobs, um, but you can make that switch, but it's your responsibility. If for some reason you're, you release a shift or let, you know, you'd say, hey, I can't work with that, does anybody want to pick it up? Nobody picks it up. It still is your job. If you don't show up for that shift, we consider it a no-call, no-show. So here's how that phone call should go, guys. 
hey Chad, I'm not feeling good. I've called five other people and this person is gonna cover me. You cool with that? Yes, I'm cool with that. Here's how it should not go. Hey Chad, I'm sick, I'm not coming in. All right, you guys gotta do the legwork. So I got, we've got a hundred things that we're doing right now for, for everybody. So you guys gotta do the legwork, make it as easy as possible. And we're, we are understand, understanding people. We are not uh, slave drivers, we definitely get it. We've, we've all been busboys and, and dishwashers before too, so we, we've come up with the things. Uh, so like approvals, holiday events, obviously there's some days that are blocked off already that uh, you, you just can't request off because we need you all here. So you'll see those, those, are, those should already be blocked off just so you're aware of that. And then uh, I mentioned the Paylocity app um, as well. Haley, did I forget anything you want me to cover on schedules? Okay. Everybody good on that? Okay, thank you. All right, we're almost to the end here. All right.
Uh, so make sure you get, get all that done. And then the continuous learning part is the part I talked about. So uh, we'll have pre-shift meetings and continuous training going on. All right. So that's our training process. All right, all employees need to complete the orientation. That's why we're videotaping it here today. So if you weren't able to make it, uh, you do need to watch this orientation video. Uniforms are required for all training sessions. I went over that uh, and we'll be reviewed and we'll get the rest, we'll complete your uniforms too uh, by the end of the training process so you have everything you need for the summer. Uh, if you're unable to attend any of your training sessions, makeup days will be scheduled in April or May, but you will be unable to work regular shifts until completed. You know, if you haven't gone through your liquor training or any of that and you miss a training session, you do need to complete that before you can really start your job. So do make yourself available. We try to be as flexible as possible. We do all of our trainings mostly in the evening because we know you have school during the day. So we're here all day and all night for you to make sure you get your training done. Uh, everybody knows about the, you should have gotten an email from your manager or supervisor about signing up for training in the Excel sheet and all, or the Google Doc. Okay, make sure you know about that. Uh, when we break here, uh, you can ask any questions to your manager. So you have any questions about training? But basically, training starts officially tomorrow. Okay. With that. Good job. What? Please. Uh, is there one more slide? <laughs> oh, too soon. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is just quickly requirements. So module one, everybody needs to do. You get made to do a property tour. Property tour. Lunch and mock service. So if you're a lunch server, make sure you go through those. Dinner and mock service. Everybody needs to do liquor training. Bartender trainings, uh, just for the bartenders. Valet, you'll have a specific training. Snack bar training, pools training, and finish it up. And everybody has the certification. Okay. Uh, so when we were in a break, we're going to have pizza when we finish up here. All right. We're going to have a little lunch, and then Robin's going to also have some time and some video and some HR stuff to go through with you. So don't disappear. We're not done for the day. All right. Is there one more slide? Oh, that, that's what you should be getting in your sign-up sheet. I want to make sure you know about that. Uh, your checklist for signing up for your Module 1 training. So if you haven't seen that, please complete before leaving. And then, last slide. All right. Does anybody want to, for FH months before we finish up, want to do the mission statement? Anybody brave enough to take on that task? All right, come on. <laughs> Come on up. Good for you. Oh, you don't have to come up. You want to do it there? You can do it right there. No, let me stand up. Boys Town's mission statement is to be the finest golf club in the Southwest. Okay. Oh, what about the... Oh. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Close. Anybody else want to try? The, the whole little... No? Just to, so you're aware, you guys, we're going to have an orientation at the end of April. If you learn your mission statement, you'll be asked to come up, and Patty will be handing out twenty dollars uh, to do the mission statement. So, yeah. yeah. So if you spend some time learning your mission statement, it'll be totally worth it for you. Okay. Do you want to try it? Okay. What she says, and then is. You have to do the whole mission statement. Word for word. Well, as close as you can. Okay. Do it. Bye. Okay. All I know is by exceeding the. Expectations of the men. That's one of the lines, yeah. 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 Nice, that, no, good for you for trying. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a little tricky. It's, you got to remember all that, uh, the, the highlighted words that usually gets you there. Okay, so practice that. I think there's one last slide. Comments, questions before we break and have lunch? All right, thank you all for all your attention and paying attention and listening. Have some great lunch. Thank you. She's right up there.